Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Acolyte. Now this is a Star Wars Disney series, eight episodes. However, I'm not sure if this is going to sound good. My thoughts were to do episode by episode, but I couldn't get on top of that and this might seem segmented or a little broken up and different from most of my podcasts, but I want to give my feelings on the season, and I have to admit to not breaking a rule that I have, but when I finished episode seven, I went and did a little research on the show and got an idea of what was going on because I just really, I needed some answers to things. I'll say that up front. So episode 8 and my feelings on this might be disjointed. Hopefully I'll edit it well. You know, try to get episode by episode. But in the long run, I'm not a fan of the show. If you like it and you love it, awesome. I wish Star Wars all the best. I hope it just keeps me in the magic, uh, never-ending story thing that I would envision it to be and want it to be. So more power to them if you like it, if it's successful. But I might say a lot of F-words in this podcast right up front again. I am almost at my wit's end with Star Wars, in a sense, and I think that's where this podcast is going. But like I said, the way it is with doing episode by episode, writing my notes down, trying to edit it, then deciding maybe I'll just do a one podcast like my normal thing and get my feelings out and such. So... I guess let's begin. Episode 1. Well, it starts with a crawl that talks about 100 years before the Empire. I mean, 100 years before the prequels, I guess, start. And in a dark corner of the galaxy, there are a powerful few that use the Force in secret. Now, again, I talk about my frame of mind going into things. I kind of consider myself sort of introspective and... I think a fraction of people on this planet even delve into, uh, you know, what goes on on the inside of themselves and who they are and blah, 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 and the skills I have from psychology or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Maybe it just keeps me functional, and it doesn't allow me to, you know, really get to the heart of things, but I try to be honest. So I went into this with a good mind. I didn't see anything going on. Maybe a blurb, and I think, if I'm being honest, the only thing I heard was it was going to be a show about the dark side, or dark side apprentices, and maybe that's my um, only memory I have that I actually knew what the show was even going to be about. Didn't know who was in it, don't know nothing. I saw that it was out, didn't look into it, but hell, look at this. I'm going to watch a Star Wars show. And... The first episode starts, and as soon as the woman comes on screen with this outfit, and it's dark purple, and she's got the, like a veil over her face and a scarf or whatever, I wasn't believing it. Maybe it's the stature. Um, I don't know. Sometimes, like Mila Jovovich or, or some of the female action stars that don't have to be big tall built you know so it can be believable but i just wasn't believing it really at all you know it starts off on a planet this mixed person is going for looking for a jedi in this like bar you know i'm not going to say it looks shitty or anything like the problems i had with the obi-wan show where sometimes the camera cut and it looked like it was filmed in a backyard or someone's fucking warehouse and this the budget on this is insane maybe i'll get that get to that in the end of the wrap up but um you know we're dealing with the plot of um you know like i said 100 years before the prequels or the main star wars story you get introduced to carrie ann moss trinity as a jedi and he is one of the biggest kudos and worst mistakes ever you got Carrie Ann Moss who it, just her presence just the look of her face the, 
The cut of her hair, everything about her exudes Jedi. And yes, could it come from the Matrix? Sure. Let's say everybody did that on purpose. Loved it. Loved it. Everything about her. But as soon as this mass figure comes in and says, like, fight me, attack me. And, it, and she, I think her name is Indara. She's just sitting there like, you know, go away. And she starts beating up. The assassin starts beating up everybody. She gets the Jedi to c confront her. And, you know, look, if you're going to do this Kung Fu Jedi stuff, I'm fine with it. Again, I want to go into all these things, open mind and have fun and relive the joy, you know, my nostalgia. Star Wars, it's just, it's part of my being, you know. Anyway, uh, this fight scene I thought was eh, and then the whole time I can't believe this actress person who's playing the assassin. The whole voice, I don't know, just, I don't know, I'm not buying it. It just didn't, doesn't work for me in that sense. And in the end, Trinity, uh, oh, Trinity, Indara gets killed. Spoilers, right? Whatever the fuck. Again, oh my god. This is a fight that I thought was trying to be aware of a Jedi, understanding eventually who her opponent is, is a reveal we don't know about. But the way she's taking that is stupid. I'm tired of Star Wars not understanding their own rules and their own people's work. And yeah, you have to live with some of the ramifications of what people did. Maybe you want to correct it. But we've got people dealing and living through fucking lightsaber battles that get their arms cut off, their limbs cut off. One woman gets speared as a child through the chest with a lightsaber survives that same woman older gets pierced again through the chest with a lightsaber and survives and this fucking woman master adara gets taken out by a small dagger in her chest okay your proper placement she's a, she has an assassin skills and the force too blah 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 i don't buy the whole fucking thing but seeing carrie ann moss as a jedi is amazing even the presence she brings the you know the confidence she exudes and this troublesome oh what are you doing here type thing and she knows what she's going to do she's obviously going to trick her into throwing the dagger and not see the second one coming into her fucking above her titty chest i mean uh, all right so again i'm already being pulled out of this show, the veil is taken down, her scarf. I don't like this actress in this fucking part. Now, I'm already going to regret that this woman is playing two parts because obviously I watched the episode, right? I don't like her in either part. And maybe she was born with a vagina, do I have to fucking point that out, or she identified, I don't give a fuck, but any of the bullshit, I never touched that clickbait shit, I don't like her in this part, I don't care how many Academy Awards she won, what her fucking, what her resume is, I know nothing about this show, I'm going in, wanting to see Star Wars, and be taken away to a galaxy far, far away, I don't care for her, I don't care about anything she does in any of her fucking performances in either character but this is the big shot she walks out of her into the frame and the title comes on all right i don't care <laughs> you just killed someone i was super excited for now i know in hindsight that is more developing in the future, but it has to be obviously flashbacks and all that bullshit and whatever story fucking devices they'll use. But, you know, we wake up with this other character, Osha, because we find out that's May, the, the assassin is May, the twin sister they thought was dead. And granted, Osha's a little more palpable than 
this fucking assassin version, but I'm not into it. I, I just don't see any interest in watching her. I, you know, again, you know, what's going on in my life? Am I excited? Do I have bad feelings that I read about it? No. I, 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 you know, besides my obvious fucking issues I have. No, I mean, I want to fucking have fun. I want to fucking enjoy Star Wars. And if you're going to do a fucking scene in space, I'm not going to sit here and complain that why is there a fucking uh, fire flames on a ship and it has to be blown out with a thing, um, like a fire extinguisher when OSHA is fixing a part of the shields in the beginning with the fucking tie-in to prequels, aliens. And, okay, you know what? I don't care. Like, little things like that, you know, go buy people. No one gives a fuck. But if it's the shield is up and there's some oxygen trapped in the shield, whatever, you know. All right, so there are flames in space. Like, who gives a fuck? But, uh, you know, she's got a cute little droid thing that is just obviously, ugh, I know it's going to be used fucking later for some bullshit, but fine. She's got two acting things to perform. I'm not really happy, and she's got this little... I think they use, in the beginning, they, they use more like voices and a, a hint of a tra traumatic past, right? And we find out through the Jedi who start to pop up in the show what's actually happened to Osha as a child. Okay, fine. Still, you know, as a, sh it's a show that starts and I'm watching it, and okay, I'm really not interested in someone who's obviously going to be the lead actress type person in the show. And I think that's just the beginnings of it's just not sitting well with me. Again, some people might look at this and love it. Oh, more power to you. I just have to express my frustration and my ultimate, I think, realization about what I think Star Wars is becoming. And it's really not for me. So, okay, so Osha gives like some fucking hint that it's none of your business what I did last night. It's, it's it's an obvious bullshit trick, but okay, whatever. These two fucking Jedi arrive. This Jedi and his Padawan, and I fucking laughed. I, I I fucking hate their outfits. And this guy looks like just the biggest jerk off I've ever seen. And I think I think these little things are just compounding. And I'm like, what the fuck? Um, how many minutes am I into the show? Ten, eleven minutes. And I try to even in the moments breathe and do my meditation nonsense and you know figure out and kind of understand where my where my emotions are coming from, where my biases and all these things that make up me as a fucking human, like we all are, we all have. And in the you know first episode ten minutes, I don't think it's the cinematography too much or the special like I don't. I don't I have this recollection of like, oh, that's a bad set oh, This This scene is shot shitty. It's just, oh my god, I can't believe I'm watching these two Jedi walk into this fucking chamber. And they look like, it just fucking looks bad. I don't know. They're going to confront Osha about her being the killer because he's a witness. And we get this whole bullshit on the ship. And it's an old friend of hers. And that's his party one. And it just doesn't feel right. He said, oh, you made a night. And, you know, you're wanted for murder, it wasn't me, you can't believe I would, it's just, okay, some of the normal shit that you'll see. And the Jedi wants fucking to send her, the person, like, alright, they send a Jedi Knight, fine, and it's part of one, on a mission to apprehend a alleged killer. They find her, they question her. Granted, fine. Does he believe it? Does she not? She goes for her toy, her fucking droid, and he goes for his lightsaber. Okay, so these are serious crimes, so we gotta take this serious. I'm gonna put her on a fucking ship manned by droids. What a droid fucking security guard, droid pilots out of the chair. Oh, how innovative. Fine. Then they go on to proceed to do some stupid shit involving that but no 
We won't get to that as they try to put these fucking handcuffs on her and then we go to Coruscant, right? Holy shit. Coruscant. This is the fucking prequels era a hundred years before. Wow, we got a really cool looking Jedi and some kids sitting around meditating and there's going to be a fucking message here. And I'm okay with Soul. Um, at times he seems disinterested, but I understand that you know he had to learn english for this or something you know fine or reading the wiki for the uh show but okay this fucking woman walks in <laughs> now okay this is star wars so you can expect everything you can expect a woman to come in with five heads seven tails 14 arms like i don't give a fuck it's star wars but this woman comes in and already as soon as she starts looking around speaking i don't want her as a fucking jedi especially anybody who's even near a main character this is this is so weird it's like you did some amazing casting now in hindsight i think that was done on purpose to just put staples on the show little fucking check marks on it get people you like or whatever and boom i don't want to see her again in the show and i know she's fucking part of it but she's vast master Vanessa, whatever the fuck her name is. Holy shit. Oh, your former Potter wants accused of murder. It can't be her. Blah, 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 blah. I don't want to see her in another scene. I don't know why. Now, mind you, I just saw whatever his fucking name was, Yord. His fucking Potter one with spikes and big elf ears. And uh, I've seen aliens with fucking devil heads and stuff. I just don't like her. I just didn't appeal to me again looking at soul i'm like okay but what's going on with this aesthetic of what they're wearing and i get the impression they're making these people stand out and you can see jedi with brown robes and maybe more traditional what we expect but seeing it on yord and his apprentice and kind of on soul here teaching doesn't really appeal to me now, even watching the old Star Wars, look and see how, like, cheap uh, Obi-Wan's robe was and how thin it was and how awesome um, Hugh McGregor made the whole outfit look. And I get you going for something, but I, I really wasn't getting to it. But we're dealing with Saul, trying to figure out what's going on. He's pleading to her. You know, it can't be old shit that I know. It's not, you know, she, she wouldn't do this. And then we cut to fucking Osha on this fucking droid controlled planetary prison transport that the jedi just left her and went on mind you the guy she knew yord was a childhood friend who granted is osha playing the character here i mean in the when she met them she did nothing wrong she wasn't hot she didn't seem suspect or whatever it was like oh an old friend's coming to visit like what's going on why are you here She's on a prison ship with these fucking lunatics maniacs. One guy's got a fucking thing on his face. One guy looks like a Cenobite from Hellraiser. Fine. Let's have some fun with Star Wars. No. We're going to break out the fucking criminal say. She's like, oh, blah, 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 blah. It's one of the dumbest scenes, in my opinion. Uh, you know, it feels so forced and bullshit. The fucking prisoners escape because one of the guys, the, the Cenobite-looking guy with the weird fucking head... Hacks into the computers, fucks up the droids. They're going to escape to the fucking escape pods. The guy's tongue can fucking rip metal off of droid's head, rip them apart, but he can't rip the fucking bars, I guess. Sure, that's fine. Let's get the fuck out of here. We're going, and all of a sudden, um, OSHA's left to get her droid thingy, gets out. These fucking guys are getting in the escape pods, leaving. She breaks the guy out who has like a fucking thing on his face to keep him timid. And he just knocks her aside and gets the fucking escape pot leaves. Whatever, fine. This is Osha's journey. She crashes. She has no choice. There's no more escape pods. She ties herself into a chair. Another dumb fucking setup for me. And she crashes on the planet. The Jedi on Crosshorn find out. Oh no. Saul really wants to get involved. Please let me go. Again, he talks to the chick I don't want to see. Going back to OSHA, she's on this planet crash, and we got this fucking, I guess, awakening happening. Um, there's, 
All right, so we know Osha's been trained and she quit the Jedi or was kicked out. So was her master. But up till now, up to this second, May and her have never contacted each other. Osha does not know May's alive, and I'm guessing May doesn't know she's alive. And this vision that she has, you know, lets her believe and she's convinced she's alive. You got Saul getting a team together. He brings his fucking Padawan, Jackie, who, again, I like her. I think the brown robes, change it back into them, is the right move. And okay, and I kind of understand their aesthetic. You're a teacher, you're in a thing, you're going to wear something different. But the guy's got to be fucking bare chested with his fucking stupid fucking hair and. Muscles ripping, and I like the uh, apprentice for Saul, Jackie, I think. She looks pretty cool, and I think that's the girl, the woman who played X-23, Daphne something. So, good so far. And like I said, Saul is pretty much grow, he grew on me. Like, there's nothing to really not like about him, except for a little bit of distance and, and like, like, not the, the way you want or you think a Jedi should be. A little bit more. But, okay, it's his character. Um, again, this is Osha and realizing May's alive. They communicate, but they don't really communicate in real life, is what I'm guessing. And, again, when you want to see uh, the apprentice, Jackie, talking to her master, Saul, and there's, there's a little bit of good dialogue. And it's the reason why I point it out is because the dialogue is so fucking bad in every place else. So she says to him something like, uh, you know, attachments and whatever. I think this gives the, you know, a little bit of growth for Soul too, because we're just getting to know everybody. It's the first episode, right? And I, and I get the interest. They go on the planet. Uh, like I said, Soul got his team together because the green chick, Remista, said he could. He finds her, she almost falls, he grabs her with the force, uh, and she says, May's alive, I believe her. Now, this is also a part where this female lead protagonist is going to win me over. This is the moment where, you know, she's confused, she's running away, she's accused of murder, realizes... Her dead sister for 15, 16 years is alive. And I don't get nothing from her. I'm sorry. I just don't feel immersed in this. And it also, by the end of this episode, is distracting me now from Saul. This was his part of one. This was his... And you, again, you don't know all the shit that's going on. But oh, uh, May, in her fucking purple fucking assassin outfit goes to a planet and this fucking guy in the distance wearing a helmet says you gotta kill Jedi blah 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 but you gotta kill them without a weapon okay um I gotta admit my first thought was if this was a test cause I'm a dungeon master I write adventures and blah 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 my first thought honestly watching it was you have to get a Jedi to quit the Order. Now, I, I, I know that's only my first guess, and I'm wrong, and I know where it's going. But it's what my first initial thought was. And again, this ends the episode, and I'm not excited. I'm a little bit disappointed. I'm not really feeling the vibe of Star Wars show. There, there are trappings here and there. Um... What, maybe a music cue, uh, Trinity, oh shit, I call the Trinity, the fucking, Carrie Ann Moss is this fucking bright beacon in this show, she will be the only reason why at this point I even continue watching and I know she's dead, but I don't like the dialogue, I don't like the setup for anything that's happening here, and I'm not really feeling invested in the show that I want to keep going on. I want to keep, oh, I can't wait to see what's going on. 
Now this gets into my wrap up of all the episodes, I think, but leading up to this show, I've been very hesitant. Like I'm aware of when I go in to do a podcast or anything I take notes on, on I potentially might just do, which I don't fucking do for money. This isn't YouTube isn't my monetary fucking thing in that sense. Um that I kinda know like where my mindset is. Like I said, I'm a little bit of introspective and I do exercises to get in deep what's bothering me, all all the things and I have been so disappointed in Star Wars. And I'm aware of loving and enjoying bad shit. I say this way too many times, how much I love Green Lantern and I watched it. I like Madam Webb, and guess what? I'm not going to debate people on how fucking bad it is, or especially someone like Maul or, you know, one of these real fucking good guys who can break things down. But I don't like all that content that they do. I don't agree with everything they do. But I'm looking at this... This should have been grabbing me, wrapping me up, and really super excited about a show. Get me into Star Wars again, and it's really not doing it. I just don't feel that immersion and that joy coming over me. Uh, the, the, the sequels to the fucking Star Wars were horrible. Um, even, you know, The Force Awakens was kind of tarnished, but... I still give that movie a pass type thing. The, the shows leading up to Star Wars have been so disappointing. I gave Obi-Wan a pass only because I enjoy it. Hugh McGregor is so fucking captivating. But I could pick out 70 fucking things that that show is fucking stupid. You should have started that fucking Obi-Wan show with Obi-Wan knowing Vader was alive or something like that. And that's when, when he finds out is when he goes into his cutting off from the Force thing. You don't let some fucking idiot tell him he's, he's alive. And going back, what? Andor, the most non-Star Wars thing, is probably the best thing they've done. Boba Fett. Mandalorian starts off, it's got its charm, but it loses it quickly. And again, I might like and enjoy things, but I'm not going to go defend it critically. I'm not going to go argue point for point. Just facts that people put out. And this isn't that distinction between do you like something, do you not... What is objectively good? Look, I get it. If you like the show, I'm fucking all for it. You know, whatever. But when you hear 180 million, um, you start watching and Carrie Ann Moss is in it and things just don't go your way. And not only do they not go your way, because, you know, we like to pretend in our heads. We, you know, uh, you know everything's going to be fed to us the way we want it. But it's bad, right? It feels like, I'm already starting off with bad writing, bad connective tissue. An actress I cannot fucking believe is an assassin. Maybe I could give some credit that she's a fucking engineer in the ship. Whatever. And that's like episode one, really. It's just... It's not the uh, immersive, exciting dive into Star Wars that I would have wanted. So episode two starts on a planet with an, what does it say, like an old Jedi temple? Uh, I think it's a local Jedi temple, it says. And uh, the assassin, uh, May, I guess, um, goes into this fucking place, you know, stealthy. And then at one point, she just starts walking around. Walks right past somebody. And I'm, I'm like... What the fuck is going on? Okay, it's a local Jedi temple, but anybody could walk around, and I get Jedis might be fucking stupid, and, you know, gullible or whatever, but, okay, it hasn't gotten out yet, whatever. And she goes to meet this guy with really bad fucking makeup, and he's floating in a stance, and she goes into the fucking pose and says the stupidest shit again, attack me with all your strength. I fucking don't like her in this role. I don't like the stupid pose and the fucking thing she says. And, okay, it's cool. The Jedi's got like a fucking invisible force field. It's, it's awesome, okay. <laughs> I'll buy it. All right. And he's meditating. He can't get through it. And, and she tries everything. Kicks, kicks, punches, fucking knives or whatever. They can't get through. 
I think she even like tries to get from above with like a jump off a wall kick. All right, so she can't, she can't get through. All right, knives. Nothing's getting through. But then she hears. You've seen her use the force against Indara in the first one, Trinity. So she can force push and bullshit. Um, maybe before she gets a chance to do that, she hears Jedi, and then she bounces off the wall like a Jackie Chan, gets up in the ceiling, clearly in front of one of the Jedi who walk into the fucking door. Clearly in front of the Jedi who came into the door. And I start thinking, if you got these fucking openings and shit everywhere, why did she walk through the fucking halls? Well, why don't you let her have a cloud people's mind type ability? I don't know. It's just fucking... Ugh, I don't know. Now we find Osha is with the Jedi. And then, you know, okay, fucking Dragon Ball guy is going to question him. Obviously, if, if Saul came out and said that the Jedi think... Because he contacts the Jedi Order... Says, oh, do you want me to investigate or bring Osha back? She's like, no, go investigate because Torbin is on a planet and she's going to try to kill him. There's been an incident where she was recognized, someone who matches Osha's description, so it has to be May. And I get it, you know, okay, whatever. But the Jedi told Sol, it's not like, okay, there's clearly lies going on. I get that. Sol isn't telling the truth. The Vermissa chick who I don't like is like she had a sister so like they so kept things hidden obviously and this is like okay it'll be revealed type thing and his his part in one you know i could see them questioning it but we get to this um it just doesn't you know so is it going to be that osha is questioning like, is she awakening her force powers? Is Soul picking up on her destiny type thing? But the other, the other Jedi are just treating it like, hey, you know what? She's a criminal under investigation. You know, I guess I can get that. Uh, uh, but we're going to cut eventually um, to fucking May on this planet going into this fucking place and in her fucking outfit. Again, I'm using the F word. This fucking show. It's second episode in. And I got a feeling. It, my love for Star Wars is turning into. Not anger or hatred. I think. I don't know if the right word is apathy. Like. I'm, I'm not even ten minutes into the second episode. And. There's no. There's no. Feeling. There's no excitement and there's a problem with me if my brain isn't thinking of adventures and stories of role play with my friends it's something i do with everything i watch basically there's always a connection mainly to one friend justin who his character has like powers to you know duplicate other people but uh, and i could use him in like every setting and it always starts that way and it, i don't write maybe write it down but i have thousands of them in my head and the second we go to play or something I flesh out the, I write my outline and, you know, the adventure. Anyway, I'm not getting that with the show. I'm not feeling it. And this girl goes into this fucking shop, wakes up this guy who clearly is way bigger for the show. You can tell this whole fucking situation. Bullshit. She can't beat the guy. He's invincible. So she wants poison. Uh, you know, it's just this whole setup. The guy behind the co come here. Like, I don't know, it's just, if I believe the character, if I had some sort of attachment, I don't, like, again, my complaints aren't, my, my attention's not being drawn to bad settings, and it's really like Obi-Wan in a way, bad setups and payoffs almost that don't feel right, that don't feel like they resonate with me. Again, it's, um, you know, maybe you put Obi-Wan, I love Hugh McGregor, Darth Vader, and I just don't gravitate towards this actress playing the role. And it could be just as simple as that, right? I don't know, but she's in the shop trying to get information. You've got to get the poison. This is going to lead to me going back to the temple. <laughs> the Jedi go there and 
They're alerted. The Jedi at the temple know it's an intruder. And when they're going through the fucking place, they're getting led to, I think it's Master Torben, the meditating Jedi, to where he is. Osha gets a vision from May. Whatever, fucking force connection, they'll do the dyad again. And she cuts off to the side and the uh, Dragon Ball Master Jedi, I don't know what the fuck his name is, Yord, if sees her and follows her. But what's really amazing about the show is Osha talks to the, uh, May talks to the Jedi and says things, again, we know, we don't know the whole story, and she tells the Jedi, confess your sins, blah, 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 blah get the council, the Jedi, um, he kind of lowers himself, opens his eyes, whatever, apologizes, and <clears throat> drinks this poison and dies. Well, look, this might be a fucking edit, oversight, whatever the fuck, hindsight. That's bullshit. Because we fucking know what happened in the fucking... We know what the crimes are. This is bullshit to the ma This is nonsense. One, a Jedi fucking meditates for so long for a crime he's so torn up about for, dec for a decade, whatever the fuck it is, gets talked to by the woman who survived an incident they thought died in. But he's waiting for her. He says, I was waiting for you. So he knew he... Bullshit. His, his, his fucking crime. Or just fucking... Again, and of course, May can get there faster than being led by the Jedi who are in the temple to Torben. So May knows this fucking secret shortcut because of a vision. And thank God, Yoda, whatever the fuck his name is, Says, oh no, I had eyes on her. She didn't do nothing. So, oh. This fucking Jedi committed suicide. Again, you get this feeling. Like these fucking Jedi are, okay, they're human. They're not all righteously good. We've always had problems with them. Uh, in general, as a fan audience, we knew they weren't perfect. We knew they were flawed. Which was really made an example of in the prequels. And that's obviously where this is going. Jedi fuck up, make mistakes, blah, blah, blah. And a hundred years later, it lets the dark side rise. You know, okay. So Torben, eh, dead. <laughs> We're going to get now this, oh, let's watch this guy shop and the other Jedi. is like a little bit of things that are, like, I'm not understanding, like, these angles they're going for, but fine is, um... He's obviously a fucking, he's obviously the master, so it's going to be fucking revealed. We know that. I've seen it. Again, coming back and forth with this show, this is the confrontation with fucking Sol and May. <laughs> what a fight, right? I mean, uh, you know, I get where they're going with this stuff and the, okay, I'm Okay. Jedi should learn Kung Fu, martial arts, or she's not fighting with a weapon, her whole fucking thing, fight me bullshit. I don't buy it. I don't buy her going for the Jedi's weapon, and you saw it with Indara, and again with Saul. I'm not believing this character can do anything, and that's weird because Daisy Ridley, I believe, now, of course, they overpowered her, whatever, called Mary Sue, whatever, but I wasn't not believing she was an action, female action star. Again, whatever the fuck. But I don't believe it. I just don't believe I'm watching an assassin who's trained in the force and who's um, very effective, except for some cool moves here and there. But I don't get it from the... Immer the... the essence and the emotions and the vibe and the the way you, you follow a character's journey and again you got bad dialogue in this show bad dialogue uh i don't like again connective tissue it just doesn't feel right and what the fuck is Saul doing with his you know saving her from getting hurt type shit 
you just know where this is going. You know, I'm, I'm episode two already. I'm not really, again, interested in, am I losing any interest in Star Wars? Has, has the damage been done? This is, this is not good things to think about and jot down on fucking paper as you're trying to write, like, notes, you know? I want to get a good thing out of the show. Okay, well, you know, I want to see a cool fight scene and what they're capable of. All right, so Saul's not going to pull out a lightsaber and just cut her down. I get it. And this reveal about, you know, he tried to save them, he couldn't. They both watched May die. She's alive. I'm trying to explain everything. I don't know. But this fight's going to end with, so, you know, fucking May, the other Jedi gets involved, uh, whatever the fuck his name is, shirtless, fucking stupid hair guy, Yord maybe, and she, she just like brush the, the dust, like she waves the dust away from her face, but so, boom, let's hit the dirt in the ground and fucking escape from a Master Jedi, Jedi Knight. A fucking Padawan who's flying a ship with a spotlight. Fuck it. Just do it. But it leads to this huge revelation where May knows Osha's alive. Osha hesitates to pull the trigger to stun her. And Osha, May gets away. Like, okay, here we go. Let's just... I get this feeling this is a fucking four episode fucking season stretched into eight. I just fucking feel it. You know, 35 minute episode, 40 minute ep Like, I'm surprised I'm not going to see an episode under a half hour. And if if, they, if it was going to be that way, they just fucking padded it with other shit. Uh, I don't know. The show's going to end with... Okay, so she realizes May's alive. May realizes Osha's alive, right? We got that. And um, she uses the dust to get away because she blows it away from her face. She waves it away from her face type thing. Again, if I'm watching this and, you know, Osha's hesitation, I wish I was invested in the characters because they're the main characters. This could be a domino effect from the beginning, sure. Just didn't catch you right off the beginning. And the more and more you watch with this supposed hero, protagonist, antagonist, you're just, you're just not connecting in. It's sort of devaluing everything else. It's making everything else feel muted and bland. Like Saul, his, his portrayal of Jedi would be really good and with his connection with Jackie. I think, I think her name is Jackie. His part of one. And the little conversations on the ship. They should be building... Some interest in me, and oh wow, what, like all I know is this frustration building. Yeah, the secrets being kept. We got that. We're gonna get made to meet back up with Crimea, who we know is bullshit, and um, they're gonna go find a Wookiee Jedi on Kofar, and that's the next target because she's got four targets, right? So she killed Carrie and Moss, uh, Trinity and Dara. She killed Torben. I think it's the kid from Game of Thrones. But that's another show I never really enjoyed for the most part. And she's going into her third victim. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, so I guess we got that to look forward to. You know, we got the third episode, and I'd, I'd like to give Disney some advice. When you're dealing with this shit, stay the fuck away from the kid shit. You know, it's one thing when you have a fucking young Leia ridiculously running through the forest in, a fu in that one of the fucking stupidish scenes where you're portraying Anakin in the prequels. You're dealing with shit. Like in the second uh, Attack of the Clones, you know, Anakin's got to deal with them killing his mom. Fine. But this is a 
flashback episode to highlight what happened in the past six i guess it's 16 years ago and it just doesn't feel right like again i think i said this in my other when i described episode whatever it was one or two this is already known one of my adventures or progression of the star was um a role-playing aspect that i do where i play campaigns and i did it for like i think we did star wars for like four years where i continued the story was luke recognizing that you can train adults like it's better for them to have gone through childhood being an a, a, almost normal kid like being angry understanding what and not being indoctrinated as a fucking toddler because anakin or whatever and this these girls are too old to be trained right uh that type shit get them younger you know so i'm not a fucking green with the jedi's methods either and th there's always been a healthy really fun debate about it like where does it where does a that line end you know and i think luke proved it like he even in the obi-wan series like let him be a child let him grow through anger and depression and you know not be shut off and trained to wall yourself off because the first time what happens boom anakin and Look how stupid they made his turn in the fucking movies. I guess you can forgive some of it because of Clone Wars. But again, we're open, open in episode three with a flashback. And I'm like, oh, these two girls doing their thing. One, you can tell, oh, okay, so one might be a little more you know, violent or e evil. Chick goes on the forest and Soul's there watching them. All right, so we're going to get... I, I just... Don't involve, I just don't want to bullshit because I know what's going to happen here. And it just, when it evolves throughout the episode, I don't want to see them arguing over kids and getting into the Jedi. Like, like all right. The Nightmare on Elm Street did a remake not too long ago. Well, uh, maybe long ago now. Who knows? And Jack, Jackie Hurley, or whatever was the actor, real burn effects, looks fucking amazing. But it fucking miserable and failed. Because we knew Freddy Krueger was a child killer and abductor, and there were allusions to him maybe being a pedophile. But in the remake, it's clear, it's uncut, it's in your face. And I'm sorry, as much as people want to watch a horror movie and get into things, there are some things that aren't going to resonate no matter how much it impacted people's real lives and whatever you want to tell a story. It just, I'm, just don't do it. It just doesn't feel fucking fun. One thing I will say, episode three, right, the flashback, I love the actress who plays the mom. Both of them. I, I, fucking awesome. Uh, again, what moments can I pick out that I fucking enjoy? Oh my god, and she might be, she might, they might have vaginas. Like, holy fucking shit. Like, and, and, and uh, I'm gonna, probably hop on these things every once in a while but there's just bullshit going on with some of the people trying to i don't know clickbait or whatever make agendas in their thumbnails about being woke and whatever i give no fucks i love this fucking actress both uh anessa or whatever the fuck even the uh the other one with the spikes on her head um not sure the fucking name uh, I get it. I like the whole fucking setup. I'm down with fucking witches being there. I have no... I'm not really having a problem with it. There's, um... There's some interest in it. <laughs> it's, it's just funny to say that, um... You know, we're, going, we're dealing with a flashback and we kind of know what's going to happen. And as it's, the show is progressing, like, again, you, you're going back to this uh, kid dilemma and what the Jedi plan to do and what their rights are. Uh, and, okay, so, all, all I really see are, like, force pushes and pulls with, like, I thought this was a $180 million show. Uh, aren't the witches, okay, so I'm, I know I'm thinking about the witches of Dathomir and probably more of the Clone Wars type stuff, or even the video games you play. Um... Uh, there's, you know, Mother... I think, um... Ahsoka... 
you know, used at the witches type thing. And okay, so these these witches are a little different. I'm totally down with that, and they got a different spin on things. But can't you like spice it up a little? You know, I don't know. I I don't get that. But but again, episode three, like you know, I get the moms love the actress, especially the um. I don't know, I think it's Anessa or whatever, but I'm totally down with the whole witch's covenant type thing, and I, for that much, I think it's cool. You know what I don't think is cool? <laughs> the fucking power of one, like the power of two, but I was definitely sold of the power of many, I think. <laughs> The, um, getting ahead of myself. The, uh, music for the kids getting their ascension, and one of them fucking gets it. I think May gets it, and Osha doesn't, but it's broken up by the Jedi type thing. Uh, again, for my opening of episode three, the, I don't want to deal with the kids. I'm, I'm not even here to judge how good they are as actors or the, even their performances. Like, you're obviously doing this shit. Okay, this is what happened to them 15 years ago. I, but you're going way too much into nonsense, in my opinion. I don't get it. And the interest I had in the moms, the whole covenant thing, it just starts to just, like, whittle away into, like, particles, like, spread over. It, again, I should be thinking of adventures with these uh, women and how I would use them in my adventures and continue stories it, it, like i said it's just whatever but there's this another weird nuance with maybe it's hindsight is whatever but if you're jedi and you're gonna go uh, test the children are you giving permission to test the, they don't need permission to test the children but they do they need permission to how to leave, or the Jedi just kill everybody and, and take everybody, and like you know, take whoever the fuck they want. Yeah, I, mean, I get it. Like I, I know I talked about like the general consensus of the fans already knew this stuff, but uh, to what extent are you going? Anakin was saved. He couldn't save the mom. Okay, so Qui Gon should just fucking killed Quado and interfered and just taking them. Fine. Okay, you know Obi Wan and the, the shit on um, Tatooine. And again, there are tons of stuff that are fucking wrong with lots of shows and movies that I love. But I'm not finding myself forgiving these things. Like, they're mounting up there. You know, I'm into episode three, and we're going to get the kids to test, lie on the test. Um, I'm not getting a lot of what I thought I was going to get from whatever happened. Uh, it's hard to explain in that way. Let's get to the kids again and say, okay, you know what? You're my sister. We're one. That saying they have, you know, I get it. They're part of this institution, the witches, and they have a role to play. Well, one sister wants it. One sister doesn't. Got your butt. May is going to stop her from leaving. She's fucking playing. She has, now, I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> And then she lights the place. She locks her in and sets the place on fire. You want to get a fucking forward flashback, whatever. We know this is also bullshit, too. Right? So what happens? She drops the fucking oil with the paper. It lights a fucking... Um, it lights a... What would you call it? A computer terminal input? And it destroys this huge fucking mining castle fortress that none of the fucking Jedi could see from miles away for however how long you're on the fucking planet. And we know the fucking reveal. This is so fucking dumb. I hate this fucking writing. Uh, again, I was nervous about the fucking connective tissue that I can just see the style of writing that's going on here. Again, I don't want to see the fucking kids involved and the Jedi's Bullshit, there's a better way to do it rather than trying to show this shit. 
Oh, I'm gonna hate you. But I didn't mean to drop the fucking flames on the floor, and I tried to stomp him out. Oh, that's a revelation. Wait till the, revel the re flashback revelation is revealed again in, like, episode fucking seven. Just fuck you. Uh, again. I want to have fun in Star Wars. And yes, some things are dramatic. Some things are comedy. There's a little bit of humor. There's an underlying current of danger and mystery. Fine. Write it better. And I'm in episode three. And I'm watching a flashback of the revelation. Of, like, what happened? And I don't give a fuck. But of course, we have to show <sighs> May um, Osha escapes and finds Saul. All the fucking witches are dead. He's getting her out to escape, and she screams for Mama. I think it's Anessa. I think. And what the fuck is going on? Right? We'll reveal it in three fucking four episodes, three episodes or whatever. This is fucking stupid. And I, you know, again, I can feel this is like a four episode, six episode fucking season just stretched out like most of the shows they fucking do. Except for, guess what? Andor. Our episodes, three episode arcs that fucking work and don't even give a fuck about that show, the fucking character or anything. But I can admit a good show when it's written and fucking acted and, you know, again, I'm not going to hop on kids' performances, but... You know, these are two children together. I get, I, again, I know one's this way, one's that way. And, you know, you're going to stay, you're not. And they're on the ship. She wakes up, Mama, oh, I'm going to fucking, don't worry. You, you know, I get it. Yeah, so this is the start of it. But we know there's more to come. We know the revelation is bullshit, nonsense. Oh, God, this is going to be a long fucking podcast. I could just feel this shit. I'm on episode three. It's like a fucking hour. I love how, okay, so episode four, maybe I can just sum up episode four is saying more bad shit, and I like how they have to show, you know, like, Anakin is not the first force uh, creation to virgins in the force, these fucking kids in the scene where Osha's at the fucking temple, and they're doing the behind the back thing that only Anakin did, like, it's just, it should be, it should make me smile, it should make me captivated, it should make me impressed. Uh, well, of course, I like Jackie, so she's there and whatever. But this is going to be a fucking Wookiee Planet episode. Um, and this, you know, again, it, this is supposed to be Saul, obviously, teaching the fucking kids. But it's this guy, and, you know, given the values of fighting. But I find it odd that these kids are doing the fucking Anakin backspin uh, fast attack move. It's just fucking funny. I don't know. It, it shouldn't be just funny and ironically sad frustratingly disappointing way but we got a decent bonding scene with jackie um you know i get it oh god maybe i just like her and fucking logan and i'm giving more benefit of the doubt because we're on the planet with the wookie and it's fucking may as an aside i can't take like her dress, her look, it's just so fucking boring to me. And the guy, we know this fucking guy is her master. It's bullshit from the beginning. He's fucking poison, this, that. And like the whole fucking episode, like, what are you trying to tell me? You have this whole cadre of fucking Jedi you're going to send. <clears throat> I don't know how many... They're fucking uh, did I count no, eight or seven? But you gotta show uh, the guy from the prequels in the fucking show, Kamundi or whatever his name is, with the long conish head. Like I don't, and you know what? My brain does he fit? You know, I I read almost every Legends book and some of the newer stuff, but I'm not a completist in that sense because I just don't care that much in that general sense. But correcting the law and whatever i don't know what the fuck he's doing here if he's supposed to be here if this makes sense but already my brain's going isn't he saying that the sith weren't seen or whatever so that's part of the cover-up with the fucking jedi if what happened but the fucking wookie their involvement in, in this 
quest to get revenge on four people. Uh, all right, so what happens in this fucking episode, basically, though? It's just, to me, not good writing, not good connective tissue. And the music's starting to fucking piss me off here and there. You know, I, I don't know what it is exactly. And by the way, I think there's eight. It was eight. It's eight Jedi. Oh, fuck. Yeah, okay, I get it. You know, the fucking council bullshit. Secrets being kept. This is why Jedi suck. This is why, you know, we ended up the way we ended. But does it feel good? You know, you watch like shows there's no review bombing and bullshit for like house of the dragon we got female-led fucking shows all over the place a history of amazing women whether they're born with a vagina or not like i give no fucks you're in a fucking uh show four episodes in and i got fucking eight jedi with uh, osha god knows this fucking you know episode is leading to but you got little hints right oh who who was Kawhi, whatever his fucking Kamir, um, yeah, who is he really? By the end of the episode, we fucking know without knowing. But we're going to get some of this inter-dialogue and stuff that's supposed to, you know, enwrap me and make me go, oh, oh, yes, like the other episode with the flashback and, no, oh, no, uh, I don't know what the fucking Mookie's name is, but, you know, his involvement in this, oh, you know, Carrie Ann Moore, she's dead and, Torben committed suicide. Um, we got the Wookiee, right? I mean, this is all supposed to be leading to something really epic with eight fucking Jedi. Granted, I don't know how many are Padawans. I don't fucking know. I'm going to say Jackie is a Padawan, and I don't know about everybody else. Or maybe I wasn't paying attention. My notes don't fucking tell me. Because, you know, and here's what's interesting. If you want to really evaluate my shit, you can tell my, because I try to use pencil, right? Well, I, I use pencil. I fuck, even if it takes me a fucking an hour to find it. I think you can analyze my pencil and see where I'm writing, and I'm fucking not happy. And it's a frustrating watch. There are things I do watch that I know I'm not enjoying. But I'm going to get my, my sayings on it, but I think Star Wars has been doing so much damage, and I, I'm not sure if I'm fucking giving it a fair shake or whatever. I, you know, I don't get it. I, I just don't get the show. Now, I think, I think we get one action scene in here with the creature, but this sets up the dumb shit that is carried through to this whole fucking rest of the season, right? How can we write these characters and make stupid decisions? Because and they might not seem stupid at the time, but they, they become stupid 15, 10 minutes later, 5 minutes later, whatever the fuck is going on with the episodes. And it, it's on both of these characters, Osha and May. Now, in hindsight, can you say, oh, they're the same person sharing two traits? Fucking fine. But it's not in this fucking show. It's episode four. I'm on a Wookiee planet with a jerk off who's obviously the master. And you've got some actors that grew on me. Uh, a little regrets because I. Carrie Ann Moss, I wanted her in the show all the time. The, the fucking witch mothers, I wanted them in the show. I fucking got, I liked them in a sense. The soul type thing is getting weary on me, and this whole intrigue, like, the politics they're trying to put in the show, but this clearly starts the bullshit with, you don't know what the fuck is going on with May and Osha's thinking and what they're fucking going through. It's not portrayed right or epic in the sense of wow like this is the struggles you know okay i understand what's going on you know i got what did daisy ridley was going through even though the fucking second and third movie sequels i fucking hate those movies they're garbage garbage but i love daisy ridley in the part and again i give the force awakens a, a pass this is somewhat nonsense to me you find out the fucking um, Wookiee's dead, right? And this is not a re re revelation that makes you go, like, like, what could be going on? No, you know immediately that Kamir 
who's tied upside down. He's the closest one there. Yeah, uh, you know, he's he's the fucking guy. This Jedi shit is nonsense with eight fucking Jedi. Granted, again, I'm not sure how many are part of one, so I can give that some leeway. But we know where this is fucking going. It's just bullshit. We got, oh, I'm not betraying my master. I don't have to do this. I can go with my sister. I'm going to turn myself in. Kumaka, whatever the Wookiee's dead. Oh, I'm going to kill you now. I'm not turning myself in. You're leading up to this bullshit. So we could have nonsense go on. Again, this all feels, you know, forced and not a fun ride. And I don't mean funny and I have to be laughing and giggling. It's not an entertaining, engrossing ride. This is, it feels like fucking idiots wrote this. People who want their own take on Star Wars type thing. And again, this could be, you know, just the, the impression I get from the last 10 fucking 15 years, whatever, Star Wars. We're about to get into episode 5 as this character floats into the background with his fucking helmet. And what is that? Okay. Because we're going to get into episode 5 where... It just fucking amazes me how far, how far it'll go. How far will we go to make something better than it was before? To be the first at something, to put my mark on things. I, you know, ugh. This is a fucking episode that should be... One of the most amazing things Star Wars has maybe ever done. However, there's no investment in build-up. I give no fucks about Kamir and his stupid mask. How he's able to fucking take on two Jedi, let alone four or five. Or how many fucking Jedi were able to confront them at once. With some being not in the frame or they got... You know, Soul is, like, not in the same position. You know, they got blown up in the last episode or blown apart. You know, I get it. But this whole fucking episode, I, you know, you want to bring in cortosis. I think that's how it's pronounced. Something I read in the books a long time ago and use it effectively. This should be the shit. But no, it's a fucking Cormier who we know Looks way too young, but says he's too old. He's taking on and killing Jedi left and right. I mean, this is Darth Sidious level stuff. But you want to up it. You want to. It just feels like you want to be better. Now, in hindsight, I would have also been more lenient if the things were built up properly. So let's put in his ability to affect people's minds and let's really get into. What is making the Jedi less effective? What about when he hits the ground and all that dirt pops up? Did he already poison that dirt? Because he had, like, give me something. Give me something. Because this fight is fucking frustratingly angry. It doesn't fucking feel right. Yeah, Disney, I know you don't want to cut people's heads off if you do it off frame. That shit doesn't bother me. But it's what you are showing. And how effective people can be in this battle. And how not effective they can be. Right? So, we got this whole episode. It's the Wookiee thing. And we're fighting on this fucking planet. There's eight Jedi. There's soon to be not many. And then you get to the end. And why is fucking May going back on her word? Who went back on her word? When she should just be like, listen, I'm here. I don't want to. I was wrong or whatever. No, it's got to be a fight with Jackie who gets involved. And... We got to get Jackie involved and save Saul. And Saul's near death. Oh, no, we're going to die. Let's kill fucking Jackie. Another fucking favorite of mine. Ooh, this is the stakes. This is what started it with killing Trinity in the beginning. But bringing it back in a flashback. This is, this, this is real stakes. These are real emotions. These are real, you know, uh, epic storylines that are coming together. And I say, fuck you. <laughs> I, I don't get it. This is Star Wars. 
You've got a guy out of nowhere. Fine. You want to make an allusion to the Darth Maul? I get it. But just do it better. It doesn't have to be fucking amazing everything. Once things are clicking and moving and I'm invested, like, things get let go. I don't care too much. And I'm just enjoying myself. Again, I hate... I, I love that hate. I love bad movies, and I watch them, and I don't care if I get hate or whatever. But I'm not defending them. I'm not critically saying no. You're wrong. You know, act one, two, and three, and this and that, and going into you know particular uh, styles of writing that should be you know included and done good well in a movie. No, I understand those flaws, but I'll just admit I enjoyed myself. I, I'm whatever. I'm desperate to do that here because I start feeling. Now I'm in episode five and I'm watching this shit that I'm starting to starting to not feel much. Um, what law they're breaking is in the history of canon in Star Wars. Who knows what the fucking new canon is and what the fuck is going on? You got a guy, a secret, but you might call Sith or whatever, so you don't want to admit it. You know what was revealed and oh. The prequels that hasn't been set and whatever. Like, I don't, fine, redo your shit. You know, cut into the timeline. Put your stamp there. But give me reasons why, good reasons why, fucking guy can take on six, four or five, six Jedi masters, come out ahead. And then when you have things going wrong, the crunch is coming in. You kill this fucking guy. You kill him immediately. Don't give me the shit where Saul doesn't kill him. You have a fucking person who can do things with his mind that, you know, that are magic. It's fucking wizardry, right? It's all fucking whatever. You don't need to point at people. You don't need to have a lightsaber. Don't give me the you're a Jedi bullshit. You just saw all your fucking comrades are dead. And not only that, Jackie's dead. And you make a fucking note to say that. And, he, and the dialogue is fucking garbage, in my opinion. I, I don't buy anything. Don't buy even people's reactions in the show, especially Osha and fucking May. The second fucking soul had the opportunity, you, this guy is cut in half. And then we deal with the ramifications in the show. Like a fucking real show would. Like a good show. You know, maybe Saul picks up the fucking helmet and goes into seclusion and you know, decides to use it to make his depression go away. Whatever the fuck. I'm not writing a better show for these fuckers. This is an episode that should be one of the greatest Jedi lightsaber battles, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, some, some good and bad camera angles. Again, the music is starting to fucking annoy me. And... By the end of this fucking thing, I'm sure it will. There's pacing issues throughout everything, but this should have been the episode. This is the episode, right? I, I don't get it. Why do I need to see such a big, huge, brawl, skilled battle for what? It just doesn't make sense to me that you wasted it on this. I can't forget the fucking tracker, right? The weasel guy and... Even with, you know, Osha's, I mean, May's revelation, Osha's alive, and eh, I want more out of this episode, and I don't feel like I got it. This should have been such an amazing fucking feat done by an insanely powerful Jedi, but I could see definitely how people at this moment only care about the fucking Sith guy with his fucking helmet with the, looks like a smiley face on it. I, I could definitely see where this is going with that OSHA and fucking May nonsense. It's of, co of course hindsight tells you that the fucking roles will be switched type bullshit, but this is supposed to be groundbreaking and it doesn't really feel like it. I'm guessing the Sith guy Crimea saying you don't recognize me in the helmet, but he doesn't have the helmet on at the end. Well, you know, as the fight progresses and 
It's actually used against him pretty cool, but you know, that's not going to work out because he's fucking invincible, man. He's in shape, though. But, again, you're dealing with May trying to turn herself in, turning on her master to fighting Jackie, and trying to, you know, like, what's, what the fuck's, what motivations, what dimes, everybody's, it seems like it's flipping. And again, like I said, this is the beginning of it. But, again, you have Saul trying his best and getting through and finally able to overcome and it has to be left for nonsense to happen. And then you really want to get me taken out of the fucking show. You really wanted to fucking cement this by the creature that attacked earlier that Saul killed, that was in the trees, that are attracted to light, that... Osha brings back and gives Saul the hint or whatever. These fucking creatures pick up the fucking Sith guy, Quimir, and carry him off. So, fuck you. Fuck the writing in the show for that. This is good writing. Like, what's the point? This. He, of course, at the by the end, and you know, he cuts him down. And you see pieces fall, and then he falls to the ground unharmed. Okay, it's fucking stupid, fucking stupid. And this is definitely the episode that just turned me, uh, you know, around. Like, I should this should have been this should have been it after the failure of the sort of flashback and the leading up to you know this episode seeing what should have been uh, a great lightsaber battle in an epic fight turns into bullshit writing and forced bullshit. Why do I want to see the villain picked up by fucking creatures and carried fucking off? Fuck off. Fuck off with the fucking May being her, uh, switching fucking, oh my God, it's just fucking stupid. I, I, you know, so yeah, uh, this is fucking bullshit. And mind you, Yord even says to him, "You," because he has him. What you know, when he does the helmet thing to get his thing off, but he gets his neck snapped like a fucking idiot. Uh, he says, "You." So obviously, again, hindsight. Edit, cut this in, whatever. We know where the fuck this leads. Um, he's the fucking Padawan of fucking whatever. It's just, you want to put these things in an episode, you better edit it better, uh, plot these things in a different way. Just, again, this episode should have been epic. It should have been the fucking thing that sold me on the show and made me excited every week to watch it. It just doesn't. Episode 6. You know, it was, they should they should name it like burnt hair because there's no fucking way you don't cut your hair with a lightsaber in the same pattern as your fucking sister who you haven't interacted with in 16 fucking years, whatever, it's a fucking family type style, whatever, you don't fucking burn your hair off and even attempt to imitate fucking OSHA. This whole thing is fucking stupid. I'm already frustrated. Six episodes in, I want to watch the suspense build now of fucking Saul figuring out, oh my God, this is May, right? <laughs> Holy shit. Fuck the droid thing, but let's keep the fucking weasel in this. Um, what is his name? I don't know, it starts with a B or something. But again, we previously on episode five, fucking eight Jedi get killed. He's fucking stupid. The whole fucking OSHA versus May and May switching, May this, this, and that, which ultimately leads to this fucking episode where May's on the ship with fucking Saul and the fucking little weasel guy, Basil, I think his name might be. And we're going to fucking have a great fucking episode. <laughs> Holy shit, man. I'm telling you. This fucking, this fucking show, boy. Wow. 
Oh my god. <laughs> All right, let's get naked, fucking Sith guy. Again. I get it. <laughs> Saul's confused. He's heartbroken. Whatever. He doesn't know it's fucking May on the ship and his fucking Sith. You know, let's OSHA recuperate and he's naked in the water. His fucking scar on his back. Oh my god, could a whip have done that? Like, oh, what? 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 Wait, what? I mean, come on. I want to see fucking, you know, naked guys, naked girls. Just fucking get them all in here. You know, I want to see fucking... I want to see a fucking woman who has a lightsaber pointed to a man who killed eight Jedi. Nine. Responsible for another four because of him training fucking May to put her on her mission. Jackie, who you started to bond with, who <laughs> he makes fun of you of. He makes fun of you. Again, fucking Saul should have killed him when he had the chance. You know, Mace Windu had it right. <laughs> He's too powerful. This fucking guy is not only the senator, main head honcho in Palpatine, but, you know, he'll kill you by looking at you for whatever. It's it. Kill him. No. Fucking Saul lets him go with his honorable thing. You know, you attack the Jedi from behind, but no, no, you let me fucking gather my shit so I can get fucking flown away by bugs in the fucking sky so I can take fucking OSHA, who kind of, you know, looks like me now. Oh, hint, 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 hint. Right? You're going to fucking stand there on a beach with this fucking cocksucker and not kill him. Again, have her kill him. Pick up the helmet. Continue on her May, and then the show is about fucking May trying to get Osha back. Stop the! F I can't fucking take this. I don't want this. Again, I don't give a fuck who has a vagina. I don't care about the color of their fucking skin. Okay, I somewhat care about how good an actor, actress, people are, but I kind of get let that go in a sense because we all know that directors can influence things. Where you know writers, you know episodes, we try to convey what they want on paper. So I'm not even dissing on fucking actresses per se or whatever, but I can't fucking take writing like that. Like I can imagine me, you know, as a DM caught in a situation where I wanted my villain to live, but one of my guys did something, ingenuity, whatever, he, he, you know, and he has an opportunity to kill him, and I prevent it. Now, you could say, yeah, of course I took the cyber crystal out of the gun, you know, like his gun's not loaded. Like, you could pull things like that off. And, like, he's happy that she would have killed him. I might have... Again, you know, I might have let this go by, but I'm, it's episode fucking six, right? I'm in a fucking hour and a half podcast or whatever. Uh, or this will be... Because I'm doing it like the episodes. And this is frustrating. Um, potential cringeworthy. Uh, I want to see... Where this leads, no, not really. I, I just don't feel like I care enough to invest in anything. Saul's on getting on my nerves. This fucking you know, revelation in this episode. Was it, it, was it, was it May's wording that got her caught? Or was it the fucking Basil Tracker guy? Rah, ferret guy thing. I don't know. But, it, you know, obviously the gig is up. We are in a position where Osha should kill fucking Quimir in a heartbeat. He's dead. He's a fucking monster who killed everybody. I don't care about the turmoil going in. I don't care if they're truly one person and they both have the same feelings but can't fucking divest and, and, and you know, be introverted enough to figure out what's going on. I don't give a fuck about anything that might potentially be whatever. I'm on episode six and again... I should have been fucking epically caught up and my heart should be breath taking my breath away with this fucking action and the, the, the storylines you know coming together, but I'm really not. I I'm not. You know what'll cheer me up though? 
in the midst of all this, and we've got some political intrigue, we've got some tension that's building with the ship, and this is broken, can you fix it? Is, is May going to betray him? Does she want revenge still? But I thought she was turning herself in because her sister was alive, and I right, forget about that. But we've got this, you know, what'll really just make me laugh and joy is a funny scene with the rat, Basil, and the little Joy, you know, squirting her with fucking oil. It just, it's just fucking dope. And it, it really makes the fucking episode, you know, halfway through this episode, really fucking shine. You know, because, you know, we're trying to figure out is, you know, these Jedi are going to go to the planet and you know, they're going to investigate. And I think that's the chick I don't like too much, or the green chick. And, you know, that's all progressing. And all the storylines are just fucking, no, it's, it's just not working. And that's all in the midst of the Jedi party with the green chick going through and seeing the bodies dead, you know, just watch. And we're going to interject that with some fucking humor and, you know, tone chips that are really going to keep this show grooving. But we're also getting into the seduction of Osha to the dark side, right? Well... Here's the problem. When you first had her on the fucking beach and when she was going to kill him and she should have fucking killed him, the dialogue might have elevated it, but it sucks. Every fucking thing he uses against her, even when she brings up uh, Jackie, he's like, what, you were going to use that? You, you have the same connection with your master? Like, the fucking, if things were, because this is the problem with the prequels, right? The turn of Anakin doesn't feel right. And, you know, he's killing younglings afterwards. You know, this this doesn't get any, uh, a pass for that. It's bullshit. And then to be, oh, the helmet, uh, you know, uh, fucking doesn't feel fitting. It doesn't rise. It doesn't elevate things. It feels like there are little pieces of pretty things that happen, uh, you know, elements that draw your attention, like, oh, a Wookiee fucking... Jedi, I've read about them in the books, and maybe it was a cartoon I saw an episode where they're young. In any case, like, yeah, uh, it's, it's a shit, it became a shit fest because every little fucking thing that's bothering me about the show gets worse. And it's just, in my opinion, bad fucking writing, uh, a non-captivating main actor, actress in the fucking show. Uh, it's just, it's, it's funny. Episode six. And let's, and let's not forget that it ends on such a major fucking cliffhanger points. Because we know the next episode, blah, blah, blah. Osha, uh, May is figured out. And <laughs> Soul's going to tell her. Oh, my God. And he knows it's May. She stuns her. She's on the chair. <laughs> and fucking Osha's going to put on the helmet. It's just fucking, I don't know. I don't sit here, you know, I'll, in episode seven, I'm going to get into some of the other things. But I, so I'll skip it for now. But yeah, we're dealing with episode six ending. We got some major cliffhanger shit and six episodes in, you know, it's almost done. Episode seven, right? Oh, my God. All right. This is where, in the beginning of this whole thing, I talked about, at the end of this episode, I went and looked up for information about the show. I really do that. My normal procedure, it's not like a rule rule, but I'd like to not see anything or watch trailers and, you know, get invested in people's thumbnails and, you know, whatever. Although it impacts me maybe to, you know, some way, because you see things and you see, you know, what, maybe a blurb or something, and you just quickly move on. But usually I wait till I finish a show or a movie. Then I do a little more research on the film in itself. Then I usually go to other reviewers and critics. And I explain that I try to, yeah, I try, whatever, but I try to go look for people I like and don't like, people that agree with me and don't agree with me. And I sit through the fucking things and, you know, try to, you know, wrap my head around and understand points of view. Anyway, episode seven is supposed to be the revelation of the revelations on what actually happened. And I think 
when I went and did research on this show, I understood a certain aspect of this that is, it just bothers me on a level that really, really makes me want to just not care anymore. Uh, there are things that I enjoy that are on my list that I never watch, but I know are good. I talk about that here and there. Like there are some things I want to get to. I know they're good. I'm just not in the mood. And this is uh, not in the mood. And we, we get to this, uh, you know, flashback, and we find out that they're looking for the virgins in the force, and they're using what looks like common <sighs> metal detectors that people would use on the beach and stuff. But you know what? I don't give a fuck. Again, it could be a mounting of shit. I'm in episode 7. I'm already fucking done with the rioting and the bullshit. But we're going to show this effect of being on the planet for 7 weeks. Because Torben is really fucking torn up about that. It's revealed, right? And we're going to look and we're finding this soil, the uh, elements and putting them in the device and potentially holding specimen type minerals or whatever and plants and looking for um, hints of the virgins in the force. And I think there's a line here and there about the planet was in rough shape. It shouldn't be this vibrant. And that's a hint of the virgins of the force. Okay, so. But right away, after I watch this episode, and I, I'm going to talk about the episode as it progresses in, in a way, but again, my mind's all over and Deciding if I was going to do episode by episode recording, and then oh, I'm going to just going to edit it, and or well, maybe I'll do one. It's a jumbled mess. I hope at least understandable. But we're in episode seven. It's the reveal of what really happened, and it's garbage. Fucking god! You're supposed to, in episodes like this. You're supposed to reveal things from yes, not only a different camera fucking angle, but a different perspective in storytelling, in investment on. Um, waiting for the aha moments, the the expectation of oh shit, so that's what really happened. It wasn't um, May who made the place blow up. It was Torbman who tried to kill her in her escaping, and you know he wanted to commit suicide because we know it's all fucking garbage now. Holy fucking shit! You watch episode seven and you go. What the fuck is going on? Okay, so Torben was fucking taken over. We saw that, but now we see the bullshit fucking scene. Again, I love the actresses who are playing the mothers. I like the concept of the witches, and I understand the bullshit Jedi going to get children. Whole aspect. But the writing is bad, was bad, and still is bad. And now I'm looking at perspectives that don't mean nothing. What do we learn? How much is important? Like, no. May fucking started a fire. Got out of control. She tries to stomp it out. She runs to get help. And it starts the stupidest shit. Look, I get it. I'm, 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 on, uh, I'm on point. I, you know, Jedi wrong here and there, but they're right. Is it a conflict? Is it not black and white? We make mistakes. We make hubris or whatever. And we want to do right. We want to do what's right. But, you know, we're protecting our own. And we have our own way of life. And you can't impact that. You know, we don't want to. We want to live free. And we don't want to be the republic. No, you can take my children to whatever. But I'm not going to. I have with your permission. Like, holy fucking shit. Are you telling me that all they had to do was deny permission? And your bullshit about we have every right to test a child? Like, what did that mean? Oh, let's take wording like sacrifice. And the reason why I bring a lot of this up, because I did do a little research, is framing. Now, I don't use a lot of fucking psychology bullshit, except for when I do my, my podcast on, like, medical or psychology things. And I've done a whole fucking playlist of, like, um, medical disorders, and I read the articles. The framing of the fucking people who run this show, who advocate for this show, is fucking horrible. Okay, I'm tired of the fucking bullshit excuses for a bad show. I don't give two fucks about vaginas, penises, fucking what sex at birth, what color of skin. All I care about is a fucking good Star Wars story. I want to fucking get carried along for the ride. Okay, so you can put your fucking framing and all your fucking interviews and all your fucking nonsense 
and just shove it up your ass because it's all fucking garbage. All of it. Yes, there are idiots out there. There's legitimate bullshit. There's, uh, there are fucking morons, really shitty people in this fucking world. And it's a shame that they have to fucking be somewhat vocal and they get a fucking, they get a, you know, a kick out of it and they get a wave going and they get more people on it and they're idiots and overall idiots, fine. But you have to have fucking integrity. You have to have a fucking faith in your thing. You do, you're doing what you're doing. You're doing it. And you're going to keep going. You hope people get along and fucking love the ride. That's it. But no, it's a fucking constant battle of fucking rephrasing and framing shit to make this shit look like it's fucking unique, ingenuitive, and fucking captures, captures people's hearts. And get this. If you do like it and love it, get it. I understand. You're not going to convince me it's a fucking good show on any fucking level. However, you will get me to say you enjoy it and uh, give you a hug and a smile and I'm so happy you're happy. If this gives me joy to people, fucking awesome. Awesome. I'll go watch Green Lantern again. <laughs> oh my God. Episode fucking seven. Don't give a fuck what these episodes are even called anymore. Like, I don't even think I mentioned that on any of my fucking things I was doing. This is choice, and it's just fucking <laughs> poor fucking Torben just wants to go back to Coruscant, okay? Just guys, just take him back, and there's nothing would have happened. You know, my, my Padawan with fucking Indara, you know, and you just fucking, again, you know, your goal is to, your goal is from the beginning was definitely to fucking, to point out the murky waters of the Jedi and the whole thing about the thing that was that were revealed. And like I said, part of my running a campaign to progress to Star Wars Luther was Luke not training children. It was Luke understanding that they had to go through adulthood, become the person they are with the trials and tribulations of experiencing pain, suffering, anger, all these things that led to the dark side. But yeah, you grow up and... You become a person, then you get immersed in the force. And I, I ran with that idea for, like I said, a couple, maybe four years in that sense. But I'm not here writing this fucking show, but I have an inkling when it's fucking shitty writing. So this is fucking, in my opinion, garbage. The whole fucking retro scene is more garbage, the pad garbage. And I'm sorry, fucking insane lightsaber battles don't win me over. Um, bad portrayals of your protagonist and your fucking villain at the same time because they play twin sisters is fucking another way to not get me interested if they don't grab me. The whole plot storyline where they were created, they are products of the virgins of the force and this fucking framing is no, you don't understand. Okay, fans of the show, fans of the legends, fans of canon who care about things, here's what the deal is, okay? A lot of people think that Plagueis and Palpatine, I think it's them too, who the fuck knows, I'm not a fucking completist nerd, although I love it, um, that they tried to create uh, their own Force creation, but they failed. And it was the Force's response to the you know, imbalance in the Force that it created, Anakin, the Chosen One, but it didn't give a fuck if the, he, whatever he did, he, he, his, the mechanism was he would bring balance to the force, and that's whatever. So, okay, so you got to remember that. Now, a lot of people might say, okay, no, Plagueis and Palpatine did succeed, because it's like a thing in a comic, or something, maybe. I could be wrong. Fuck, I'm not a, I smoke too much pot. But you see this image of, like, Palpatine surrounding uh, pa uh, the mom, Anakin's mom, in, like, a ghostly image indicating, but whatever. I think if you go for canon, even the new canon lore, I think Plagueis and Palpatine failed. And in response, the Force itself created Anakin. Now, here we are back in this thing. The kids are, according to framing from these fucking creators or whoever was the lead writer, no, 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 you don't say it. It's way different because the Virgins is on the planet itself. It's because the planet has the virgins on it that these witches can become really powerful. So let's say they were very, very low force sensitive people come to the planet, they get all this power, and they make the creation event. The mother uses her magic combined with the force, whatever the fuck you want to call it, 
and lets the other mother carry the baby that they created. Oh, it's totally different from Anakin. It doesn't take anything away. You've taken a lot away from Anakin right from the beginning, even with your insinuations, even with the things you see about the Jedi. I think I mentioned that for the other episode. But okay, you know what? Here's the honest truth. If this show was good, you wouldn't get all this bullshit. Stop with the fucking bullshit that doesn't, the logic doesn't hold up. Like, again, I don't like to use, you know, fallacy, you know, go, I, I, there's an appropriate time for that. And there are people like Mola who really are good at this shit. And you're bullshitting people. Your fucking whole setup is not good in my opinion. But instead of owning it and eating it and like correcting, trying to make promises to correct things, you just allude to shit and you, you fucking you frame it so everything was done in a certain way that fans shouldn't be made at. And then most of this shit is insulting the fans. And again, I don't give a fuck how many assholes are out there, you know, death threats and all that shit. But, you know, according, I don't go deep enough, but I don't see a lot of evidence. But that's not me to decide. All I know is this episode, episode seven, made me go do a lot of research on this show and figure out why the fuck I can't take this show, what it is about me that's making me feel happy like a there's a nothingness there. Like, I'm not even mad like Luke Skywalker. I was mad at what they fucking did to him. I even had an adventure planned in my head to correct that. I shit you not. I got my character who's going to go back in time to when Luke's on the ship, getting treated for his electrocution after the return of the Jedi, and he would change history, the past. And it, I, whole, But see, this is what is kind of troublesome to me, that this isn't happening with the show. From episode one, I didn't get that inspiration. I didn't get the juices flowing where I'm like, wow, I could fit this in here and I'm going to, or I can correct it. Even correcting it shows to me that if that impulse isn't there for me to daydream and, and, and vision uh, future adventures that I could plan and do, for me, that's a big problem. Now, yeah, I don't turn that on necessarily for crime dramas or something, but if you notice, I don't like a lot of crime. I don't watch a lot of things like that. In certain periods of life, like I said, I will go into something. But again, this fucking podcast, I can't be how long it is. We're on episode fucking seven. This is a rehash and a retelling, and from the progression to the middle to the end, it's just revealing bullshit nonsense. I fucking can't take some of the things, because even if I admit and go back and say, you know what? I hated the writing and stuff, but the lightsaber fight in in episode five was epic. It was just fucking madness and awesomeness. I hope they would have built it up. Okay, whatever. This is bullshit in this episode. The the combat, the things leading up to it, the fucking unbelievable revelation nonsense that just blows my fucking mind. And it's just it doesn't capture me this is not aha moments that make me recontextualize everything and, and just like go wow you know what a trip I, I can forgive things i understand what this meant and it makes sense to me now we're setting up for this reveal and we've got this um concern of the jedi and what they're going to do to osha because we like half 20 minutes half an hour to the movie we get like one little thing we didn't know whatever but there's this concern and i'm gonna again disney you shouldn't involve kids in this whole fucking storyline with kids and the jedi's quest for them and no matter what future story you were going into uh, you should have fucking done this better let's fucking solve with this fucking jedi shit and you know what it leads up to and you know oh they broke into the fucking place and you know we'll wait for the jedi council Again, did you really need to do this now? Couldn't this have been episode four, three? Oh, wait. Um, first flashback was episode three. Episode four, you just gotten this fucking shit over with. Was just that much turmoil in Saul and all of them? I mean, it's fucking dumb. Dumb. No matter what perspective we see that's new, there's nothing really revelation, and then... The testing is from a maze point of view this time, maybe, and the Jedi Council says no. Um, and, you know, oh, they're getting mugged, they're doing ceremonies. Oh, there's so much fear, and what's different, and this is scary. No. 
I'm sorry, I'm not buying any of this shit. I'm just not. We're gonna go into the fucking temple, and we're gonna free the fucking kids, because OSHA wants to leave, I know it, eh, blah, blah, blah. You know, you know, we gotta have the fucking Wookiee battle, though, right? Oh, yeah. Remember Torben conflicted Jedi who put himself in a force bubble for 10, I don't know, 10 years? Fucking kill me if I'm wrong, I don't know. And then he took the poison. It's because he, uh, well, uh, shit. Okay, so when they check their blood in this one, you find out they check the blood and that the M count is high. <laughs> M count. Oh, God, just say the fucking word. Uh, exceeding really high and they're the same person. Well, they can't be. No, if they were twins, they should be. Di even if they were twins, they would have different whatever the fucks. But no. They are the same person split into two. <laughs> and because of this, Torpen gets fucking shot up with adrenaline and just jumps on a fucking speeder and goes off. Because they have proof now. This is stupid. Okay, this is Torpen's crime. Being mind fucked and, <laughs> and jumping the gun thinking that because the council said no, we're not going to get involved, don't interfere, let them go, let's go, whatever, that they now have proof so he's going to go. But isn't the Jedi Council's main thing is to find a virgin in the Force? That's why they were there. And it's, because, you know, I think in the prequels he says a virgin in the Force, sent around a, a place, a person. So they were already questioning, can virgins be on a place or on a person? I mean, that's the, the, sinu that's the idea I got from the prequel. No matter, I'm not sure what the wording is, but the way he said it around a person, like it could have been on a planet or a tree, because I think it's just going to be the fucking tree, right? Um, and that's why life on the planet is growing so much. That's why these witches were able to do what Palpatine and <sighs> Plagueis couldn't, is create life. But no, it's not the same. The conscious was split in two. They will be less powerful than Anakin. By the way, this is all framework nonsense garbage interview bullshit but this is supposed to be epic it's supposed to be you know groundbreaking it's supposed to be captivating and you know enthralling and it's just bullshit but go talk and you fucking go wow yeah. and we have to get to the real meat of the fucking episode right the real huge <laughs> revelation and Ugh, fucking carry him off and the Wookiee have to take the plane, go catch him, they're gonna try to catch Torben. And like, Saul does this fucking mind reading thing from like, gotta be hundred, like a hundred, two hundred yards away into the structure of the building and he's hearing their thoughts. Okay, maybe there's a connection with the powder one thing, fine. But it feels like out of nowhere you can do this, like you could do this. And then he, it just feels kind of wrong. Almost like, I don't know, like, the force healing in the past, and, like, I think they even alluded to force healing on this show, but, again, we have to get to the real fucking heart of this fucking episode, the battle, the, the real truth is fucking silly. So, uh, the fire set, again, this is some different camera angles, whatever, the fire set, Meg runs into the room as Sol and Torben are, like, confronting the, the two mothers, again, who I love, and... There's a tension there, and there's like, um, it's revealed later that the mother would have let Osha go, let her be. Now, I would have wrote, written it like, yeah, convince the other mother with the horns or whatever that, um, no, we want one of the daughters to train the Jedi. And then we'll bring her back in, and whatever she learns, she'll be more powerful. No, this was just, okay, look, I get it. I'm going to let the kid go. May runs in and, like, help fire. And fighting stances are made? I mean, how do you relate to that? Even if you were like fucking aliens with tentacles or six heads, someone runs in fire, help me. You, you, this is the moment you band together and you go try to stop the fire and something goes wrong, right? This is how everybody dies. Like, no. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. Torben ignites his lightsaber, the motherfucking gets her staff ready. And I thought the staff would be able to block lightsabers, but you don't really get to see that yet, sort of. But I'm like, I bring, and this is the begin, this is the beginning of like 
several fucking things that are just so fucking mind boggling, just so fucking damaging that it just bothers the shit out of me. So we gotta have this thing build up. May comes in. No one runs to fire. No one goes to get help. I don't know where the fucking other sisters are and the whole priestess. Yeah, get to the. Like, I, I don't know. But this should not have even begun to happen. People should have turned, went to the fucking kid and went, What fire? What the fuck is going on? But no, can't have that. You can't. Just, you can't. What we can have, though, is Mother Anessa or whatever. Um. The hotter one. Uh, she decides to turn into a smoke monster, Miss Black Mist. And it doesn't look too friendly nor pretty. And she starts fucking disintegrating or, like, you know, becoming mist. And they purposely show Saul has not done anything yet until he sees. He f they even show him following the fucking mist to go on to May or Osha, whatever fucking kid it is there. May, I think. And she starts to become incorporeal or either she's breaking into mist or the mom's mist is engulfing her. So maybe she's trying to have her get away or whatever. And Saul fucking ignites his lightsaber, plunges it into the mist and kills the mother. And before the mother dies, she's like, I would have Osha go with you. This is horrible writing plot. When you got this on the wall, when you've got teams in rooms, this is what fucking is so stupid about this. $180 million, I think, is the fucking thing. And you saved it for this misting. And she didn't turn into an angel. She didn't turn into. This is fucking stupid. So now Saul kills the mom. In front of May. So May knew everything. So May knew, right? And she's trying to convince now and no, wow, ooh, aha. So May, you know, from May's perspective, you know, the, the Jedi killed the mom. But we, we're going to make it worse. We have to make it worse, right? So we're going to have them fight. I'm not sure, like, the, you know, Soul's like, oh, do they cut away first? Got to add on a she chose you, mom died, and the kid crying, looking up at it. So May hates these. This is why May, whatever. And is she right? Is she wrong? And with better writing, I'd even talk about it. But it's done so poorly. Who gives a fuck? Like, yeah, you you, you purposely wrote these things in a certain way to have this outcome. And then the other mother yells, "Run!" Which is fucking pretty cool, scary. Uh, great voice for that. And. Uh, May takes off and <laughs> to further Torben's torment, his anguish that makes him commit suicide in the future, he, oh, I can't believe I'm saying this, he deflects arrow shots, lots of them, and he's pretty good at it. So, fuck you, Torben, you know what? You're really, you're really a bad person. It's just fucking, you know, I don't know, I don't know how you even survived 10 years meditating. How dare you deflect fucking huge amounts of fucking arrows? Which your time kind of shitty? Wouldn't you just shoot them all at once? Okay, whatever. Fuck it. Have fun. Let's turn our brains off and just enjoy this fucking shit because Saul is doing his kung fu shit. He doesn't want to fight the mother. He's all fucked up. As a matter of fact, I think he's confused. Like when he hit the fucking mist, I think he thought she was just going to zap back, but your lightsaber's on, buddy. So when she does come back, he looks confused that she's dead. And, you know, he looks hurt. Uh, she told me she, she I was going to send her with you. She chose you, buddy. And, he, you know, so he lets it go. And she keeps swinging at him. And he keeps fucking doing his blocking and shit. Oh, so, so fucking epic. <laughs> I, I do like the part where the, uh, the mom is like, fight me. Again, I. I ain't fucking like these. I like them. Whatever. And that... And then the fucking place just explodes. It's just so stupid. We saw the fire. There was no revelation about 
engine cooling overloads or someone pe- tore up because it's all about fucking torben for me too right this fucking guy he fucking took his poison it's fucking it's so fucking irritating it, it, it would even be make me angry like some of the other Star Wars, but it just don't it just doesn't fucking matter really. But shouldn't Torben have saw May maybe run away? He finds her later, right? Or he's he purposely hit engine coolant or regulator panels on purpose, and then this place just fucking explodes. Like, oh my god, that's why all these people are dead. Remember, the kind of lie is <clears throat> that. May set a fire and killed everybody. So it's it is a fucking bullshit lie. And however that goes up the chain and whatever bullshit they pull to make this not affect the prequels and not affect canon, whatever the fuck. It, it it just here it's just oh my god, the place didn't explode. So he sets his fucking lightsaber, cuts a staff in half. I did like to uh, fight me, but it's just stupid though. It's great acting and portrayal, but what the fuck does that mean? Fight me. Oh no, that's where fucking May gets it from. This is fucking dumb. Oh my god. But we're gonna get to the place just exploding and it's over. Oh no, we've got all the answers. But it can't be over because this is where Torben is tormented and really pushes him over the edge because the sisters are back and oh wait, his mind is fortified. <laughs> You know whose mind is not fortified? Who we haven't seen since he jumped out of the fucking shit plane that uh, Trinity was fucking on. I give no fucks about names and uh, whatever her fucking name is. And um, so they got the Wookiee under mind control. I don't know how many. It's like fucking 15 of them there. All doing their mojo. And this fucking Wookiee apparently hits hard. And he seems to have this basilic effect, I call it. Which t- slows time down and makes all the choreography look shitty. Like, hey guys, didn't you just do that lightsaber battle in episode 5 that was pretty creative and looked okay. And, you know, had, had some moments. No, this whole thing looks stupid. The betrayal of how strong he hits and stuff is just dumb. It's fucking dumb. It just doesn't look right. It doesn't feel right. Uh, and this is a battle. This is a fucking battle. This fucking Wookiee is... Uh, he's just under control. Like, the witches do their thing on him, right? Let's get this battle situated where Torben gets fucking force choked and slammed against the wall. He should have been dead, like, ten fucking times, but this strike from the Wookiee should have killed him, but... Torben's got his lightsaber reversed, and he's blocking his the lightsaber from cutting him in half by holding it up, holding it you know downward. Now, as soon as you look at it, my brain tells me first off, it's not a real good point on the lightsaber. You want it a little more closer to the hilt because that'll be a stronger block. But you've got no leverage. You've got nothing to protect you from a Wookiee who apparently. Hit so hard, he'll knock you back. Gives me the impression of Darth Vader when he hit, and you know how hard he seemed to be, in, especially in the Obi Wan show, where Obi Wan had to adjust his style a bit. And he's apparently scratched his face, which gives him those stupid scars that I don't know how he got gray in ten years, but sixteen years maybe. But okay. It's over. He's fucking gonna die. There's no way this fucking Padawan, who's really good with defecting arrows, by the way, can live past this. But oh no, Soul comes to help. He can't help. Here comes Carrion Moss. Uh, what the fuck the name was again? Islande? I know I'm getting it fucking wrong, right? I, I have to be getting it wrong. Oh shit. I mean, come on. Indara. Wow, I can't believe one of my favorite characters in the show, I can't remember her name. And like, you do have flashback episodes and the character's been dead for so long. But here she comes, jumping on the fucking thing. I get it, I love the Matrix, she's awesome, I fucking love her. Love her in fucking everything she does, she's just one of those actresses. 
And she just fucking does the fucking mind whammy. Now, you know, before I think I lied when I said this is like this is like the three fuck ups because there were way there were way more. But Indahara tries to clear the Wookiee's mind. And the second she does, like all fifteen 16 Jedi are dead. They just flop over. It's so fucking dumb. You know, and remember, this is also recontextualized. Why we come into the room, we see them all just lying down. And you know what? I don't even give a fuck to look and say, no, that's not right. Not the right positions, whatever. Oh, is that where the mom landed? Was she screaming mama on the way out? Like, whatever. It doesn't fucking matter. It just doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, we see... Hints throughout this thing or connection to tissue to when May found the hole, when they got out. Because you definitely lead into the worst, one of the worst fuck ups in the show. Regardless of Indara clearing fucking the Wookiee and killing them. Because I think the other mother, Coral, I think her name was, she's awesome, um, dissipated and she got away, I think. And we gotta get to another revelation that's. One of the dumbest fucking things I think I might have ever seen. Again, ooh, new camera angle. Maybe someone is approached, but this scene is Souls told to go get the kids. He runs to look for them. They approach each other from different sides of a broken walkway. Let's call it a little bridge. There's a space between them. I'm going to say not too far. But they stand in each other, you know, what'd you do? Where's mama? She's dead. You know, you know, this is just cementing. Oh, she didn't know what happened. May does. May views them as killers and he slaughtered the mom. And, you know, when, when Osha or May, who, May, fucking whoever, Osha gets walked out in the other flashback from the other episode, you know, they're all dead on the floor. We you know why. It's just bullshit. But here... Is when, you know, this is another one of the reasons why I went after this episode and did research on the show. Because I can't think of the fucking stupidity here too much because my brain breaks. You know, a lot of times when I'm a DM, Dungeon Master, or Game Master, or I'm role-playing and I'm in charge, I'm doing the adventure. It's one thing to, you know, put out to your, your players what's going to happen and how they're going to react and whatever they're going to do. And there's no fucking variation of this setup that makes any sense that anybody in any normal world would do in any situation people who even imagine themselves to be jedi rolling dice and playing okay so they want me to believe that saul runs into this scene as they are both on each side of the bridge confronting each other whether you want to say it's done correctly you will probably fine. they don't know what's going on the two sisters one told him, I'll kill you, and it was going to burn the place, and wanted to stomp it out, right? Oh, no, we saw the, but it hit an electric panel and blew the place up. These two sides of the bridge are co going to collapse. And in, again, in any fucking adventure I ever, in anything I've ever done, this is what would have happened. Saul approaches, sees the two bridges collapsing, Grabs both of the kids with the force and pulls them over to him. Done. End of scene. Blah, 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 blah. Then you could have May say, oh, no, you are a killer. And then jump in to try to kill herself. And somehow she survives. No. What they fucking do is have Soul try to keep holding up both sides of the bridge. Yes. The Jedi is holding up both sides of the bridge with the kids on it. Now, you could say, Joe... You can write that a little better. Of course you can. You can have another layer of rock falling on top of them. So his instinct was, oh, careful kids, I'll grab you. And he goes to grab them, but another layer from the ceiling is going to crush them onto the bridge. So he's got to hold that up, and he can't hold all... I, no. What he does is he tries to hold up both sides of the bridge for a long fucking time with two kids on it. Okay, I, I think I, I, I gotta take fucking aspirins. Like, that's how, to me, that is some of the worst writing because you know people, 
pointed this out. I cannot see this being overlooked. I cannot be, see this being someone going, yeah, but why isn't he taking... No, he has to hold up the bridges. Okay, but why doesn't he just grab the kids and let the bridges fall? Oh, no, he. we have to make it dramatic. It's a struggle. Why? So we can show a Jedi trying to hold tons of fucking weight with the kids on top of it? Gotta be fucking shitting me. You've seen force pushes and pulls in this show. We saw fucking Kylo... Uh, Kylo... Smilo Ren. Whatever the fuck they're calling him, because when I did my research, I saw a joke. We saw Smilo Ren not only impale a Jedi, but force pull another Jedi into that to create a fucking shish kebab Jedi lightsaber thing. It was fucking dumb. Whatever. We've seen the, the Wookiee in this episode. Force pull this fucking guy, throw him against the wall and do shitty strike that was blocked horribly. And there's another fucking huge shitty moment. No. Saul, Jedi Master, tries to hold up two ends of the fucking bridge and lets one drop. And then instead of grabbing Osha with the force, he has to run, jump, and grab her physically. It's the worst fucking writing for horrible fucking moments. Trying to write in a fucking moment that wants you, whoever wrote it and stuff demanded it be done that way. Because I cannot figure out a fucking reason why you don't add something else to that scene. Even if you love the scene, you had to have added another layer of rocks falling on top. So he can't grab them quick enough. He has to hold up the shit that's falling on top of them. Not hold up what they're standing on. Because they're fucking kids. They're both three fucking half feet tall. Whatever. Four feet tall. Holy shit. I'm fucking two hours into this podcast. To this fucking recording. And, and I don't know what will be added on. If my, and I, I don't even know what the fuck's going on. I got another fucking episode. Holy shit. But this is fucking bullshit. This episode, this fucking podcast, right? This is going to put it over the two hour mark. And it's just frustration. And it should be something I'm passionate about discussing what can be done to fix it. Like, even being invested. I think like Game of Thrones, season three went wrong for me. and But I was still invested enough to talk about it and, and eventually watch it. And, you know, talk about friends like. What I thought I would have done, but recognizing some greatness in there, such a perb acting and stuff. I, I, I don't find a lot of that here. I don't find much of it at all. You know, moments of Saul liking Saul, but ultimately it's just fucking stupid. Everything about his fucking actions, all the people are dead, and this fucking guy didn't get killed for it. There's so many twists and turns. We know what we're leading up to because fucking OSHA put the helmet on at the end of the other episode. But we have to fucking do this flashback to recontextualize what happened in episode three's flashback. And it doesn't do much. As a matter of fact, it just fucking makes me more angry in that way of you just piled on more bullshit. Do I really have to have this fucking scene where the g woman turns into a mist monster and doesn't think nothing's going to happen. Couldn't she have said, let me take my daughter and get out of here. And then the other mother, Coral, gets into a fight with her and it's something else that happens. No, it feels contrived, forced garbage. I don't feel anything that gives me hope for this fucking episode, especially when this ended and I had to go do some research on the show. I almost couldn't believe that this was made and it's being put out there every fucking week, $180 million dollars. And, um, I got one more episode left as this fucking thing finishes up. Just fucking wow. Wow. Episode 8, but... Oh, wait, Jesus. Episode 7 wraps up, I think. Uh, you find out it's Indara who... Says that all we're gonna say is that May set a fire, she killed everybody and died. The only survivor was Osha. That's what they're gonna tell the council... And they get into this, like, stupid fight almost, like, whatever. But, um, I guess that's, is that it before episode eight? Yeah, I think that's about it. It's just, um, you know, pieces together leading up to Osha waking up. Where's my mom? Everything's gonna be okay. And, you know, Saul wants to tell the council whatever. I don't know what the fuck that would, why not let him? He could just leave out the fucking shit, but 
Is he concerned the Jedi will figure something out? Because they're all fucking dumb. I mean, we've known this show seven episodes in. Uh, Jedi are shitty people. Uh, I doubt they're going to figure out he's hiding something. So why not just let's all go and say, look, you know, I felt like it's my fault. And they'll give him some Jedi bullshit uh, speech. Uh, maybe he won't be able to be her master or something. But okay, uh, you know, they're too old to train bullshit. Whatever. I don't think it was my body one, you know. Got to do that. And I think that really ends episode seven. <sighs> I think the only way I could describe this is with a sigh. Glad it's fucking over. It, I don't believe I'm saying that. <laughs> I've watched some bad Star Wars shows. But just to say that I'm glad this is over. I've had such disagreements, but I enjoyed Ahsoka. I kind of liked Obi-Wan, but I, you know, looking back, it's just bad all over. But the joy of watching Hugh McGregor, seeing Darth Vader, it's just, okay, you know, that's what I got. I'll watch it again, I'll have fun with it, even Ahsoka. Lots of problems in it. Mandalorian, love season one. Eh, season two is okay, season three, you know, it's shit, but it does have charm. Is it trying to do something? Fine. <sighs> Spin-off shows, cartoons, whatever. But this is it, episode eight of The Acolyte. And I'm just like, <sighs> just, that's all I can do is just, this fucking show starts off with Kamiya going to OSHA in the helmet, because remember, that's where we left off, the breathing. And, you know, they got to show that before he gets to her, he goes to his knees, his eyes turn black because OSHA's power is fucking growing or something, and he's, she's, cause she's panicking, something's going wrong in the helmet. And, okay, go, f just fuck you. I've already seen garbage, and now watching episode eight, I've already just fucking dealt with this bullshit. But, yeah, oh no, ooh, OSHA is, mm, let's write this situation so we can get it fucking where we need it to be, or want it to be, because if it, where it needed to be, this fucking whole show would have been written differently, but no, of course not. Well, we had to have the big struggle of Kamiya getting the helmet off, and of course OSHA saw May killing a Jedi without a weapon. Ooh, you know, can't see this one, didn't see this one coming at all. And I swear, Camille says something like, oh, we're agreeing to go together, but to see who gets her first? Like, what the fuck is going on? There's no clear mindset because they wish wishy-wash, flip-flop all over the place. That I don't know what the fuck this OSHA is really thinking again if you're going to piece this together as they're really one person so they're experiencing each other's turmoil and emotions and not aware of it can i maybe if i was a dm that's how i might write it if this isn't like what they're trying to convey but just enough you put on the fucking helmet you're gonna agree to go with him he sees may outstretched hand whatever you know come on stop the bullshit and oh she can't kill it's just yeah, whatever. We, this whole the fucking episode is so telegraphed. Everything about it. The whole show has been basically, except for the things they purposely moved around and realigned to fucking be a certain way. It's just, whatever. We gotta have a, um, a fucking May fucking shock soul and get away and it's fucking chase and it's just fucking spectacle and oh wow pretty and they're going through fucking rock fields and stuff like that and it's gonna cut again you know there were some cuts in this show and some of the music cues that you know kind of annoy me like the fucking song at the end of the other fucking episode it was like a pop song and as soon as i looked down and i was looking at paper and I, I heard the fucking song come on my brain. What the fuck? So, I think that's a topic that'll be on fucking YouTube everywhere. That fucking song at the end of the episode. Maybe I'm wrong about the episode. Whatever. But here we're cutting to the fucking green chick who I don't like as a fucking character at all. Who would do the reveal and all the bullshit that she's got to handle things. And this is all leading to that bullshit of why no one knew about it. Uh, 
oh, cool, I'm D, whatever the fuck his name is, when he said there was no set, like, all this cover-up and bullshit, and, oh, it's, you know, what did you think, this is how the fucking Jedi were, you know, before they ended their fucking Age of Enlightenment, or whatever the fuck it is called, or whatever era, and this is the end of it, it leads up to Palpatine, oh, and let's not forget the fucking... Oh, the cameo that's in here, but that's that's not yet, right? Because we got to get through this whole fucking episode. We got to do senator shit. Um, like the actor, I think he was from Supergirl, and in like old canon or new canon, I can't remember the fuck which one. Like one of these Sith guys was in the Senate or had somebody manipulating the Senate. Was it Plagueis or his predecessor? This is there's a lot of familiar, his master or whatever. So this guy could be somebody, but it's not the person that we know shows up or who's spooky in the background. But you'll get this fucking political shit dispersed and, you know, when we got to go back to fucking oh, OSHA fucking with Smilo Ren. It's fucking, you know, the show's got to keep moving forward. Of course, it's fucking Dolph Plagueis. Coming out of the shadows on the cave that they fucking planet they landed on. Is he Crimea's new master? How will we see this play out in season two? Wow, Darth Plagueis in the flesh. Let's see his bony hand type fingers, part of his face, because it is, I think it's confirmed now. Like I said, it was episode seven that made me fucking actually go and look into things a bit. Wow, you know, before they take off and join forces, Ymir, Kamir, and fucking... There's a Ymir thing. That's a Thor thing, maybe. But they're gonna go get fucking May or something. We gotta show Plagueis, though. Yay, whoa, shit. Star Wars, lore. I should be so happy. I should be, you know, smiling and giggling. have a little funny feeling inside. Well, I'm not. So that's the truth. Of course, they're going back to where it started, I guess, and they're at the fucking busted mine fortress of the Night Sisters, and we get another clear indication that Saul could actually beat Smilo Ren, or the, the Sith, Kamiya. He couldn't do it with fucking seven, six other Jedi with him, even when he was with his powder wand, was fucking awesome, Jackie, who they fucking killed, and... Kept cutting back with fucking the other shit. He was fucking... Anyway, Saul, when he's... I don't know, what is he fucking... Cleared his mind better? He's, he's using his anger. He's always using it. Whatever, but there's a fight. And he, you know, pulls out his fucking little red lightsaber dagger that's on the bottom. Um, You know, it's done in the books in the past, I believe. Uh, This has been done. And okay, you know, I, I should be happy that they're making callbacks to... Maybe even lore that's not canon no more, like Legends, fine. But I just don't care, don't buy it. So Saul's in this epic duel with Kamiya, the Darth Sith, or whatever the fuck. He has no Darth name yet, I guess, right? Or not known. Is he listed on like a webpage as a Darth something? I don't know. This is something so shocking, but as the fight stops and... I think there's like that pass by and Soul cuts the lightsaber, breaks it. But you eventually get to the point where um, May, dressed as Osha, get it, wink, wink, is saying, no, she doesn't want Soul to die or something. She's like, you're going to pay for your crimes. And it's all to show and let Osha recognize the lie. Soul killed her mother. Oh no, this is all just a big misunderstanding. Think about it. You know, the Jedi were right. Saul says, you know, I was doing the right thing. Was he doing the right thing? Kind of. Well, no, Jedi going at the kids. Leave them alone. You know, Jedi orders in the council. Shitty people. You know, Jedi are human. This is, this is what leads up to it. So let's get Saul in a position where he's, you know, he, remember, May knew everything. And this is the May now who's the new OSHA. She's wants to do better things, right? Remember that flip she did? Oh, my sister's alive, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to turn myself into the Jedi, but oh no, I'm going to kill the Jedi, that type thing. No. We're going to have this so it can be revealed to Osha. The soul lied. No, this is just epic. 
And in this, com- this culmination of this show, this and the epic convergence of all these storylines, Osha is like, oh, why didn't, if, if you did the right thing, because he says you killed my mother. You know, he, I guess he had to, right? Turned into a smoke monster. I don't know what the fuck she was doing. Again, ooh, big misunderstanding. But he couldn't tell the Jedi or the Council because without May, remember, they, they really, I think they legit thought May was dead. Except for Torben, who says I was waiting for you to return. Never fucking, under, never revealed in any reconception of what actually happened in any of the flashbacks. Because that Torben shit was fucking garbage week. Just shitty fucking bullshit. But Saul says, no. I didn't tell the Jedi because I didn't have proof. What the fuck are you talking about? There's no way any of the Jedi wouldn't have taken this kid and said, oh, what's wrong a super high count? Yes, they might not have known that her unique signature is like, there's another identical one. I, like, I didn't think it gives a fuck. So this revelation of revelations from the flashback into the other flashback, it's just got the whole foundation of the show. It's just bad. Bad writing, bad follow-throughs, bad commitment to bad ideas where there's fucking writing rooms and no one's fucking saying things to help correct things. It feels that way. It feels like there had to have been people trying to correct things and whatever, but it never, it never got through to people who made decisions. I don't know. But that's bullshit. Oh, I didn't tell because he didn't have proof. So I was doing what was best for OSHA, you know? They would have sent her away. You know, there's a lot of fucking writing here that should be really explaining things and getting you through the episode, but it doesn't. For me, it doesn't. I'm just waiting for the end of this fucking show. You know, don't get this feeling of, you know, there are movies you watch, and the end of, end of some movies are amazing. They, they kind of lift everything and make things fit in your head, right? Like a, the puzzle pieces fitting together. This is just more aggravation. It just sounds stupid. It sounds like nonsense. They would have sent you away. I, I was doing it for you. You were too old to train. Like, come on. So for this, before he says, because I love you, OSHA force chokers. Force chokes him. And I'm telling you right now, from the first episode to this fucking shot of her, I can't believe she's even an actress in this show how again I, I don't even like to i don't care if she has fucking big titties little titties color of her skin vagina fucking cock and balls like i don't give two fucks this is not a believable character there's not a believable arc the fucking switches were so fucking dumb dark side to light side light side to dark all foreseeable all just done in a bad way and here we go with this look on her face as Sol chokes, she chokes him to death. It's so fucking, oh God. And again, he wasn't even somebody I latched on to as like, oh my God, this is the guy I'm still watching the show for. I think around episode, I don't know, was it five? I was like, this is bullshit when he didn't kill fucking, whatever the fucking, Camille, the Darth Sith guy. This is God fucking awful in my opinion. I, this moment is supposed to be so, so jaw-droppingly fucking epic again. Don't care. I just don't. You know what's funny? As she's saying to him, like, don't, don't talk. <laughs> He's choking to death. I, when the show first started, um, I don't know, okay, no, let's say episode two or three, a friend came over and we were catching up on the show, sort of. And I said to him, I, I swear I said to him, I explained some of the changes in lore and like some of the new things about new canon. And one of the things I explained to him was the bleeding of the kyber crystal in the lightsaber to turn it red. <laughs> I had no idea that it was going to happen, maybe, or did I have an inkling? I don't know. I'm not going to lie. Say, you know, I knew this was going to happen. But she's fucking choking him. He, you know, he's like, oh, it's, okay. it's okay. You know, it's all a big misunderstanding. No one's really bad here, right? It's so gray and murky. <laughs> Let me turn my lightsaber blue. Well, the blue one that's his, whatever. And make it a red lightsaber. Holy shit. 
They did live action bleeding of a kyber crystal. Wow. I think this was, I don't know, the first time I read it was Darth Vader. Was it a book, a novel? And Palpatine says you have to bleed your lightsaber, or whatever the fuck. I don't know. Whoa! Crazy shit. Crazy shit. And what the fuck are we supposed to be feeling? So, fucking OSHA drops to the ground. Like, is this a revelation? No. Oh no, did I kill you too much? Did I squeeze? No, you fucking killed him. And what the fuck is May doing with the breathing? And it's such. Okay. In my opinion, bad fucking acting, bad directing, whatever. It's such. It's so fucking watered that it's so bland. It just doesn't resonate on any level. I don't give a fuck what Kamir is looking at and. Osha is evil right now, so she chokes him to death and falls to her knees and bleeds her crystals. Oh, oh just fucking stupid. I just the, the everything that compounded up to this episode, like enough. I mean, these looks are so epic, right? She Camille goes to touch her shoulder, uh, Osha, because obviously he had a new acolyte, but oh no, she points a lightsaber at him and as, as it bleeds red, there's these cuts and these, these fucking looks going around. It's horrible. Like, yes, is this me finally frustrated? It's finally over. It's the last episode. But no, this is from the beginning. As soon as they came on screen, I say they like they're two different people. Whoever the fuck this actress's name is that plays Osha and fucking. Um, May. Amanda Stenberg. You know, this is a wrong casting. I don't care how talented you are. This is bullshit. I, it's unbelievable. The looks that are going back and forth. Oh, look left, look right. You know, what emotions they're showing. What are they conveying to me? It's like, oh, it's so fucking, it's just bad. Just fucking bad. Oh, man. Oh. <sighs> But this is epic. This is what we needed. This is that switcheroo. This is the twist on the twist. This is, oh my God, it's happening. And we have to cut to the scene where the green lady, surprise, because Camille's got his helmet off. It means his mind is, wait, it's just out there, you know. And I don't know what the fuck her name is, Remissa, maybe. The green chick with the lightsaber whip. Yeah, guess what? You're alive. It's you. Yeah, no fucking duh. Did you really think this fucking, this character throughout the whole fucking show was not going to be revealed as his, this kid's master? Yes, maybe here and there you might have thought she was a the Sith Lord or, you know, uh, infiltrating the Jedi or something like that. Sure, but we all knew there's some connection and it's fucking sh just shitty. Who cares? Oh, no. Oh, and that illusion that uh, Camille said he's, it was a long time ago, like he was ancient or old. Well, guess what? Didn't this green lady tell Saul that um, she remembers him as a kid? And that's the connection, get it? If, if this woman knows Camille, I mean, knows Saul when he was a kid and he was shy, and the reason why Camille... Says the soul, you don't recognize, you don't, because he says there's something familiar about you. Because he was a student with soul. Get it? It's all fucking epic. It's all wrapped in, wrapped together. But apparently he did something, whatever. He got kicked out. This fucking Jedi whipped him. And okay, so maybe the, the, the theories and stuff, again, like I said, it was episode seven that maybe, usually when I'm on episode eight or I'm talking about the show in general, I have not gone and seen anything. I get my thoughts out, and then, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, formulate in my mind, like, you know, other people's opinions and see what's going on out there. But no, this is bullshit. So this is garbage. Wow. Oh, my God. What a setup. What a setup. And you see, here at this point, I thought what, what would have happened is, well, maybe I just wanted it to happen so we can get this fucking, some of this shit over with. But I thought... Osha and Camille would just kill me. Just fucking kill her. Kill her, please. No. Camille does a disappearing act, I think, and whatever. And 
Osha and May team up like they go, oh, we gotta get, I know a way out. First of all, when people say I know a way out and you're already outside, yes, they're within a courtyard or something like that, but it just seems stupid. Like, you gotta travel through this place. You know, you're fucking both practiced, been taught Jedi or the Force. Maybe one's a little better than the other, but I could just see you getting the fuck out of here. Okay, it's a big mountain, whatever, but it just seems fucking forced and stupid. Sorry. Oh, May and Osha gotta escape through all the rubble that they experienced when they were a kid. Okay, great. I think Bermessa, the green chick, brought like, I don't know, fucking 12, 13 Jedi. Instead of Camille, like, looking out while this fucking chick fucking screws over Saul's dead body, it would have been fucking hilarious if he would have just killed everybody and they would have ended with them facing each other or something because it was all fucking jedi just spread out with their fucking lightsabers and you two go search whatever and she goes over to the body but you know you see come here looking because he got his helmet on now he can't be you know you can't read his thoughts or whatever cortosis come on it's fucking it's epic just epic but she's gonna fucking apologize to her friend that's dead on the floor and again, you know, in another world, maybe if I cared, like the first episode, maybe I could think of how Trinity's still alive. Like I had this, I thought was a great thought. Like I know I'm getting crazy here. This fucking podcast and all the cuts, and I, I don't know what the fuck's going on every episode. But in X Men Last Stand, yeah, it's not the best X Men. Jean goes crazy. She's disintegrating people. But the battle that starts that at the end when they're going for the kid. I thought it would have been awesome if in the dark, when, there's, when the fucking stakes are down, there were hordes of people coming after the X-Men, and they were trying to stand in a line, that an optic blast came out of the darkness and just started hitting hordes and scores of them, because optic blast could fucking hit a wide range of people. It would have been a way to bring, like, because it was a mystery what happened to Cyclops, whatever, like, anyway. That type of thing happens in my brain, and it didn't do it, like, oh, let's get in Dara back, what if she's really alive? Like, you can't kill me with a knife or uh, whatever. Like, I'm not poisoned, Torben. Like, just, you know, is, is Soul dead here? Does she kill him and give him a secret mission that'll be revealed in the future? Probably not from what happens later, but it's just fucking, it's just ironic. I just, there's no fucking awesome feelings at the end of this fucking episode. Like, I'm, holy shit, I'm watching Star Wars. Acolyte season one is over. Whoa, you know. It's not happening so far. Maybe cheering me up for this show would be May and Osha kind of coming together again, realizing, you know, one is you and me bullshit and really understanding the love between them. And then when Camille shows up in his fucking helmet, you know, am I fucking crazy or Osha says, oh, let my sister go, and I'll be your apprentice. You can train me. And me goes, are you sure? It's one of the fucking shittiest deliveries of a line that should really convey a certain feeling of what the bomb we just shared. It just comes off as fucking... It's so weak. It has no substance. Are you sure? With this fucking look on her face... Oh, I'm sorry I don't like this actress in this role. It's just fucking silly. And then, instead of him fitting into a ship, like, what the fuck's the reason they can't all go together? Like, who gives a fuck? Drop her off on a planet, dive into the water. Oh, they're going to find you through me. Oh, you know how we'll end that? I'll wave my hand as Camille and just fucking wipe your memory. Oh, God. Really, this is so fucking awesome. Uh, can't wait. This is all fucking going to pay off, right? Just nonsense. But I'm sure, I'm sure when Osha says, oh, I will find you, and they're embracing, like, oh, she's going to find a, you know, memory wipe shit in season two and, you know, implement that. And that'll be part of the fucking, one of the plots of season two. Uh, Osha completing her training and going to get a mind wipe may and make her evil or maybe they'll do the we're sisters we can rule the galaxy together maybe she'll get the ascension and get the marks on her head like, like who the fuck knows what that can go that's so fucking epic and she's gonna learn oh man this is 
Ugh, can't wait. She's going to find her. She will find her. And of course, we're not done yet because May, who, by the way, you know, I noticed has control of the droid that she wiped that spit oil in the pit. I don't know. Ooh, this is fucking stupid. It made such an attachment to OSHA in the beginning. It just doesn't make sense. But anyway, that might be fucking bits and pieces of bullshit floating through my head because we have to get to this moment where she's confronted at the temple, the Coruscant, and of course she has no memories, nothing. And Vermessa, whatever, has got to get to the bottom of it. It's just fucking whatever. It's almost done. We got. We, get, we can get there. All right, let's get the fucking oh, show over with, I guess. Let's go to the Jedi Council. Tell everybody a half-truth and then lie your fucking titties off when you say about the witch covenant, what happened, and then Saul <laughs> betrayed everybody and killed him. Listen, I don't know how stupid you have to be to watch episode one and see him training the kids while like someone got killed I, I don't know i mean yeah he had, he had an accomplice maybe he's with osha now that the like what do they think's happening what is this lady telling them oh but tell the senate what you need political enemies they're gonna enemies will get, use ammunition against us what the fuck from the beginning it's all been about this fucking nonsense let's make the fucking jedi shitty let's make everything murky and gray let me write these fucking things in that have nothing to do with the fucking Star Wars um, feeling and, and, and even the nuances. You try to do tone and it's horrible. But here is just this Vermissa lady telling everybody that Saul betrayed and killed everybody. <laughs> it's so fucking, it's so laughable. I can't believe, I, like, I laughed out loud oh my god Vimestra what a fucking what a move we have to keep this in line with the Jedi in the prequels right they didn't know about a growing evil they didn't think about anything how was Palpatine you know because that's their goal like I wouldn't put it past them to go next episode 30 20 years later put some makeup on fucking Osha May bullshit whatever and just get it as close as you can to palpatine being born right so the next season land with baby palpatine being like how fucking much are you gonna pull this out how much freedom did you have to fucking put your mark on star wars here we go there's no there's not much like even logic and arguments that can be made for uh, even even if it's a quarter of the shit that bothers me this is unbelievable. Saul was training Jedi. Forget what he did 16 years ago. That's sort of documented and known. For 16 years, whatever, he's got a new party one. You come to him about this OSHA thing. Now, I know you're, the, you're this Vemestra lady who is a stopgap before the fucking council. And fuck you about the ending. Because when I get to that, it's just even more nonsense when but this scene particularly where they're getting the information what actually happened from Vanessa and she just lies her ass off and covers everything up as much as they can because we can't fuck with everything it's fucking bullshit it just feels so fucking wrong and bad at the same time again you know I don't like puppies getting killed in movies but when John Wick's puppy gets killed that is attached to the memory of his wife and it's the only thing holding him on to sanity and goes on a killing spree i get it so many movies that you know wrong things happen but it's part of the story again from the beginning you should have stayed away from the fucking kid act all the fucking jedi interested in the kids and that whole fucking angle and here you are just lying and saying soul who is obviously not fucking killing people and didn't set all this up and you're gonna get that to the count now, it's got to go to this fucking Senate meeting here, but let's just assume it's not directly to the council, and it's not a lie, super lie there yet. I, I just have to take that, so I don't know. 
Now, her master is going to get brainwashed May's help to find her old pupil, obviously, Camille, because of the whip marks on his back, before he went to evil. But she's brainwashed, so earlier when Osha says, they'll, uh, May says, they'll use me to find you. But they can use her mind wipe to find the guy who mind wiped her. And I'm going to guess that the little tidbits of force powers that Vermestra displays, like force echoes of past events, like that echoey voice, and she can hear like what happened in a certain battle or something. I guess that's her plan, but really, again, who gives a fuck? But just trying to give the show some credit that she's going to use a brainwashed May to find her pupil, which is obviously with Osha. And that should be apparent, I guess, but because she says, she doesn't know who Osha is. Right? You don't remember your sister, poor girl. It's fucking, oh, God, I hate using words to trite and nonsense, but this is bullshit again. We're like, who cares? And we got to set up the scene where Camille and fucking, oh, Darth Osha, I guess. Oh, God, should probably get a name, right? They're doing their thing on this fucking beautiful scenery. Of course, it, the screen's got, got to go to black when, with this fucking look on her face that I've seen through every fucking episode, Osha lets Camille, and poor Camille, what a fucking, he, he's great in the role. He's, he, I don't can't fault him for being in excellent shape, excellent at lightsaber stuff. He seems probably, he's probably a superb fucking actor. You know, kudos to him, but god awful fucking writing because they don't say nothing but he puts his hand around her hand that's holding the lightsaber and it gets <laughs> behind the camera gets behind him in the shot and the music's playing like i don't give a fuck holy shit again this is not fucking campaign shit good shit is good shit to me bad shit is bad shit and i've learned to actually uh, recognize that i like bad shit sometimes i, I don't you know, I'm not going to debate certain things that I love, that I enjoy, I watch over and over that are legitimately not good. And there are points that people would argue that I would never try to attack and just, just like, take apart because you can't. And I think that this show is riddled with them. Fucking riddled with them. But, hey, it's not over yet. Because after this fade to black, I mean... It's going to redeem itself. We all know this. And this is another piece of information that you can believe me or not. But when I started watching episode one and I decided to do, you know, when I was going to do my podcast and I go and I look at the wiki, I said to myself, I know for a fact that Yoda has to be involved. He has to. Be, it's 100 years before the prequels. Yoda's about, what, 700, 800 years old? <laughs> And he's part of the council, but here's this fucking, it's just, just the stupidest thing. This door is open and fucking Vermestra walks in. And this is another moment where you're supposed to go, oh shit. So she lied to the Senate. She's keeping that political enemy shit tight. She's fucking pull, vote blue no matter who, whatever the fuck. And she's going to go in and tell Yoda what happened. <laughs> Oh my god, the suspense. What's going to happen in season two? Is she going to lie to Yoda? Most likely, right? Because the fucking Jedi are idiots. There's, there's not, or is she going to tell Yoda everything? The cover-up. Oh my god, the cover-up, the cover-up, the cover-up. Fucking bullshit. Oh my god, this fucking scene. Sorry to disturb you, Master. We need to talk. And by the way, thankfully, they didn't end this fucking episode with this fucking horrible contemporary, like, pop song shit that was god-awful in the other one. But if you listen long enough to some of these things, I think they change it and they just stupid shit. But that's it. We're fucking done. Oh, my God. How long will this fucking podcast be? It's going to be fucking long. I hope it's not all chopped up sounding and fucking crazy. I can't admit to being the best editor and best whatever. But I tried to get through the episodes and 
really kind of highlight some of my thoughts on what was going on and my feelings as I progress. And as I said, I was honest that by episode seven, when it ended, I went and started looking around. I couldn't, I almost couldn't believe what it wasn't making me feel more than what it was making me feel like. I'm so detached. I've got this revelation. I had this epic Jedi battle, this characters and the little elements that are beautiful and I love. But in the end, this is a waste of time. To me, this is a waste of $180 million. I don't know who's in charge of these projects and how long they storyboard and what feedback they take. But well, fuck you all in a way. Like, like, you know, you see it coming with Obi-Wan and Boba Fett. And, like, again, I will watch Obi-Wan again. I will take the enjoyment I get out of it. And not give a fuck what people say. I don't care what you, what YouTube slant they put on Miss Marvel from. I liked fucking Miss Marvel. I liked the movie. I don't care how bad, whatever her name is, Brie Lawson in the movie or acting. I enjoyed and I enjoyed the Marvels too. Get that? I enjoyed fucking She Hulk. Holy shit! Things that I can fucking point out that are bad structurally and whatever. But if I get fun, if I feel this nostalgia. And I'm carried away, but at least I try to be aware of it. I can't do that here. We are at episode eight. This fucking podcast will probably be like fucking three hours, and it's just mind boggling. And I wanted to take this time to dedicate to this particular aspect. This, this, because of what I think's coming for me is not caring. And you know, when, when I do podcast i'm not looking for catching the hottest wave and riding it and and if i did i would just fucking put out a podcast as fast as i can as fast as i watch something even if i didn't like it or didn't want to watch it and occasionally that does happen and it happens more for recommendations like if someone tells me you should watch something but I, you know i didn't in the end enjoy it uh, you try to you know find what's good in it i don't know what to say overall about what this show is about and it's 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 how it rubs off on me because it's all pretty much negative a couple of pretty elements here and there things that i strove that i strove to almost want to like on purpose like seeing carrie ann moss and um jackie and uh the appeal of saul and what i thought would happen to his progression it just doesn't work seeing his villain come out of nowhere killing like seven or eight jedi and taking on soul in the power it just fucking rubbed me wrong and you don't kill the fucking guy after you just murdered everybody because of some bullshit you're already showing how shitty the jedi are jedi are it's been revealed in your episodes like we know what your agenda is and whether it's uh, striving for a legitimate ideal of you know showing what your version of oh this is how the jedi went wrong and i'm going to tell my story fine do it better. I cannot recommend this fucking show for like almost any reason. Again, from the second she was on the screen, both versions of her character, I didn't buy her in the role. First big mistake. But then again, you've got some casting super highlights like Carrie Ann Moss, who oozes Jedi, and the, the two mothers of the Witch um, Covenant, the Night Sisters, whatever. Um great casting roles um i hated some of the jedi casting it's so hit and miss it's so grating I, it's hard to experience a show like this like even if i watch some of the cartoon stuff that i don't wind up in the end super enjoying like the end of rebels or um like where certain turns happen in certain seasons of stuff i can't envision that in my mind because my brain keeps putting this into a four to five episode story that was just spread out padded with people who thought they were doing clever good writing and i don't agree with it i don't resonate with it it's not even something that propels me in a i hate you way i'm gonna do fucking 18 podcasts on it go look on the internet and dissect all these fucking bullshit interviews and Show the fucking hypocrisy and all all the nonsense. No, I, I I don't care, and I don't do that for almost any topic because this is my enjoyment and therapy for myself. 
and leaving behind like things that I enjoy and things that you know some of my podcasts are just me reading a fucking article on science breakthroughs or a certain mental disorder it, it, I'm not here to fucking jump on this shit and get billions of views I mean but holy shit I do have this fucking urge to splatter a big fucking sucks logo on it and I fucking fail all the shit people do in their thumbnails, like, and in my, but you know what, I know I'm probably just gonna go through with TDAC, fucking, the Acolyte Season 1, maybe I'll put dot 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 sigh, okay, but, um, I'm not gonna invent a fucking, you know, witty fucking thing to say, I don't like not saying, I don't like saying there are certain aspects like an actress's portrayal or an actor, and especially kids and stuff. You littered this fucking show with stances and perceptions of what you want and you think Star Wars should be, and in no way does the connective tissue for these plots and these subplots and everything not, not only don't work for me, they don't make sense a lot of times. People's motivations, again, if you're going to tell me that it should be understood that there's a, they're one person. Just think of them as one person, and they're in two different bodies. So yes, May will change on a whim and have different looks and outviews and act differently. Part of the problem is she's not portraying that in the characters. It's one thing to play a, a villain assassin who says, attack me with all your might and get into poses. And a chick who's a version of you who's a mechanic and just, you know, going through her life and having a job. That's the easy part. You can easily differentiate. But as the show progresses, there's no depth there. There's no inner turmoil that's portrayed in any of these passionate monologues or dialogue. Again, some of the dialogue in here is just awful, in my opinion. Um... Some of the reconceptions of uh, like trying to do an episode where you're doing a flashback of what happened, and then you do another episode of a flashback four episodes later, and it, there's nothing really important in there. And it's not only that it's not important, it, it doesn't impact me in any way. What the fuck's the point? May knew all along what really kind of happened. It's episode 8 that Osha figures it out, and there was all these hints that Saul wanted to tell her through all this and whatever, and Osha's now an apprentice to a dark side, and bled her lightsaber. It just feels fucking wrong, it doesn't make sense, it's all bullshit, and I can't believe I want to end this podcast like that, like, I'm going through episode by episode, I'm trying to admit... I try to examine myself and learn what I'm going through at the time and think back on what it's impacted me about an episode of a show and coming out by episode fucking seven and having to go look and holy shit, I gotta go. I don't remember the last time I've done that. It happened by accident once or twice. Like, you know, I was on Twitter or something and I saw like a blurb and I read the headline and oh, maybe I knew something about what someone thought about an episode or something. But it's so rare, but I was so amazed at what I was feeling, what I wasn't feeling, what the episodes were building up to and what they revealed that I had to go look at the end of episode seven and that fucking music. Oh my God, stay out of this bullshit. I don't care what music is written, how it was written. Someone should be there and say, no, stop. This is, this will pull you right out. This is not going to work. No, I have it up there in there because whatever reason, your fucking mom wrote it, your fucking, it has, it, it's, it's meant for the song and the show. Well, do it like Duel of Fates or something like that. Like, you know, you're already pieced, picked up and pieced together shit that you wanted to have an end goal with prequels and give and take of shit. But it does seem at times you want to put your stamp on it. You want to really... Show that you, you know, it was this per these people first, the Verdants and the Force, and two girls, twins created by the Force. And no, it's 
it wasn't that we created by the force because that's Anakin. Get it? The force itself decided to create Anakin because Plagueis and Palpatine failed. It was a counter move because the force was disturbed. No, this is force sensitive women, witches who found that the planet divergence is on the planet and they use that to create life. And again, it is it is said in the show one of them did it, the other one carried it. Fine. Twins. But when you go and you start reading some of this feedback and stuff, and it's like, oh no. And it's tried to be explained because one of these things I read and a couple of things I watched were le- legit, almost fact checking shit that you can, you, can, you can confirm immediately with your own eyes and ears, and then even with a click or two, like what, what is actually being said and stuff. And I'm fucking tired of shows using as a crutch. The fucking bullshit arguments a Defender show. Just shut up. Have integrity. Don't say nothing. I'm not saying be bullied and, you know, whatever, but th- you're, you're showrunners, you're writers and uh, head people at certain departments in the show. Stop blaming it on certain sex of people. No, if your show was good, it wouldn't have been a review bombing because the lead actress is black or she has a vagina or you know, these fucking role switches or changes made to some of the fucking canon. You know what? These things have been done, will be done probably, but when they're done well, when the show is just good, it just doesn't impact a lot. When you got bad shit happening, it just becomes irritatingly annoying. It becomes easy to see. You're hearing words coming out of characters' mouth and you're just rolling your eyes you're waiting for certain things to catch up to each other. The show is not good, in my opinion. And I'm glad if you like it. If the grid just makes you feel happy, you could recommend this to anybody. But I don't think I will, and I think that's how I'll end this podcast. I don't recommend this. It wasn't a good experience. In, 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 the, in the end, it feels like wasted money. And that's another thing, like... You know, you hear shit about Adam Sandler and things... You know, the way they, you know, get $100 million from whatever. And they, it just feels like a bullshit project. Writing off fucking big numbers for big losses. I don't know. But it doesn't look like the show is $180 million. And yes, I'll even put some bright spots like Carrie Ann Moss. Um, one, one of the lightsaber battles. Uh, even bringing Cortosis in and things like that. Um, you know, I can get... The appeal of Camille, the Smiler Ren, or the, the, his the assassin character. Although, right from the beginning, I just thought he was an idiot with the fucking shop, and they knew it was just a bullshit story. So, uh, there's no real aha moments that made me really recontextualize the flashbacks, and this whole story feels shitty, and the Jedi are shitty, and everybody's shitty, because that's the story we want to tell, and it's going to end with lying to the Senate, framing Saul. And what are the interests for next season? I'll try to steal them in, and this is something that we're looking forward to. What does Remestra tell Yoda? Does she lie to him, or does she reveal everything? Because either one of those things is damaging, potentially. Well, let's say with this show, it's definitely damaging. I I would say potentially if it was like a fucking really good show. Because you'd have to navigate those waters. Because what does Yoda's response to this? Remember, we have the prequels. We know what leads up to it. There's a darkness. They can't figure it out. They don't know Palpatine's right under their nose. This is the beginnings of that, right? Because we got to show Dark Plague is back there. So does Vermestra say, oh, I framed Saul. I lied. And this is everything that happened. Or does she tell the lie and try to work it? Either way, damaging. Yoda knew, kept under the rug. He just, whatever. Or he doesn't know and... The dark side's cloud and everything already, 100 years before. Oh, my God. And then what's another one? Oh, oh, she's going to train and become a master and what? Uh, kill Kamir? Well, there's that connection. But Remestra now is going to use mind-wiped May and find... So that's that. 
So that's like, that's like three or four. I don't know. I really don't fucking know what what is promising. They've done enough here that I guess they could do huge time jumps. You can get rid of this fucking actress who is just fucking not working. And maybe get older actresses to portray older versions of them at a different point. So you can... And the reason why I say this is because I, I think they're desperate to connect this to the prequels, right? So if this show is ending on anything that they want to do, it's most likely going to be the birth of fucking Palpatine, right? That'll be one of these little fucking fade to blacks they do at the end, followed by a fucking pop song, probably. So, there you go. I am not happy with the Acolyte. I was just frustrated for most of it. I was frustrated so much that I don't even remember portions of this podcast that really showed and highlighted like what is good about the show. Because I don't think there's much, and... It's just buried. It, it, there's just so much here, and I get the fucking the the critical response. I'm sorry, I'm not buying this fucking bomb reviewing bullshit nonsense. You know, it doesn't. It didn't happen to Wonder Woman when that show was that movie was amazing. No Wonder Woman too. Sure, it's not a good movie, but I enjoyed it. And there aren't campaigns for these things. Uh, I don't buy it. It doesn't fit well with me. And that's really it. The Acolyte, season one. Not liking it. Not good. Flashy, maybe. A couple of bright moments. But tonally, not good. Plot-wise, coming together, not good. The aha, the aha moment, just not done well. And that's it. So I hope everybody who enjoyed the show really enjoys it. There's no animosity in that sense. I mean... And again, I don't give a fuck what you put on your thumbnail, what agenda you have, or you're just honest and gaming the system. But I'm not here for the fucking bullshit. I have an opinion, and it's my opinion, so what? Enjoy it. For those of you who hate it, you know, I get you. Uh, this is not something I'm looking forward to ever watching again. And, you know, if a season two comes, yeah, you know, I could see me fucking having to watch it in that sense, but... Not anticipating it. Well, I hope everybody's doing well. Have a great summer. Wish everybody the best. Take care.